This Saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an American broadcast channel. The last channel still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. Cartoons were the dominant. Good morning, Platoon. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning. You know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning serials. As always, I am your host, the Captain. Bringing you the best in cartoons from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and more. But to be honest, lately I've just been focusing on the 80s. Then I had a little 70s in here. This week we... 70s, a little bit of 60s. Little tiny, little tiny 60s. Uh, actually, no, it's all, it's all 70s and 80s. Um, but, man, I tell you. I am a sucker for the 80s. That's when I grew up, man. Uh, cartoons were always felt like they were so much better, man. They were my they were my peanut butter and jelly. Always my comfort. So, all right. Before we get started, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book collectible video game magic toy comic book and more store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And you can find Are You Game on Facebook. You can find The Captain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you can see me posting dumb stuff about you know, toys and comics and, and uh, vinyl and stuff like that. Just the same stuff I talk about here. So, alright. So, I'm going to give you a heads up. Captain's got a lot going on. So, I mean, man, Captain puts way too much stuff on his plate. I said this last night. I got a con. This Saturday, tomorrow, I got a convention that's mine. Pickle Comic Con. We got a lot going on. Then next week, I'm doing another con for somebody else. So, the captain doesn't slow down. But I'm giving you guys a heads up. Uh, I gave everybody a heads up on last night. Uh, we may be holding off on a, on a Sci Friday. Just, just throwing out there. I might. Depends on how my week goes. So, I'm too busy. I'll have to put it on hold. I'm sorry. But Saturday morning sales will be. So, the captain's working on some stuff going on. As I was telling people last night, um, I found a building. Um, the captain might be getting a building that I can put as a part of storage for the shop and for studio space. Because we're thinking about doing something. And I want to ask you guys right here, right now, um, if I did 24-hour channel. Mind you, this isn't all going to be Saturday morning serials. Ain't going to be all Sci Fridays. Ain't going to be all Group Therapy TV. Mind you, be a lot of it because I got a lot of that in the can. Just saying, I got hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours. Hell, I definitely got a hundred hours because this is a hundred tenth episode. So you figure you average every episode maybe three hours. There's three hundred hours of television just on Saturday morning serials. So. But I'm thinking about trying to put together an, a, a, a channel that runs with uh, some other friends doing other shows, uh, magic-based shows, maybe some comic book reviews, maybe some video game playthroughs, stuff like that. Um, I think it's something I'd like to see again. I don't know if you guys would like to see it, but if I get enough people tell me, yeah, maybe it's something I'll do. Just letting you guys know. But... You know, that's, 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 that's done right made a little ways. I'm going to supposed to, I'm going to try to go see that building next week, so. But, the captain's tired and worn out. Not going to lie, the captain does a lot, a lot. Ain't nothing like panicking because uh, you had a guest drop out of your convention. Just saying. <laughs> but. We're going to start off today with something that every, you, you guys always seem to ask for. And I put off a little bring it back. And I brought it back last week. And that's right, Josie and Pussycats in outer space. Um, nothing I can tell you about that, man. I love some Josie and the Pussycats, man. That's a fun show. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of the movie. Huge fan of that movie. Dumb, but man, it's a great movie. So, this is Josie and the Pussycats. In space, this is episode seven, and this is the Mini Man Menace. Alliteration, Mini Man Menace. Enjoy. Josie in outer space. Pussycats of all these plays.
boy, I hope we're on our way back to Earth this time. So do I. But with our luck, we're headed for the land of I don't know. Oh, I've been there. It's right near Philadelphia. Or is it Minnesota? Minnesota is the largest city in the whole state of Indianapolis. <laughs> I don't really care where we're going, as long as I can be close to Alan. What do you think, Alan, dear? Hmm? I think I'd better change course. Three degrees to starboard. There we go. And here I go. Alan, you're just about as romantic as that gyroscope. Meow! Meow! Beep, 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 beep! Meow! Beep, beep! What's up, fellas? What are you looking at? Golly, isn't it adorable? and little spaceships. You're not supposed to have dreams until after you fall asleep. I'm not dreaming. Go see for yourself. Oh, look! Now it's doing the cutest tricks. All right, Melody. I'll take a look. Where is it, Melody? I don't see anything. Golly, where did it go? It was there a minute ago. A little tiny spaceship that looked like a big mosquito was out there doing tricks, right? Right! How did you know? Melody, when people are floating around in space for a long time, sometimes they start seeing things that aren't really there. Do you understand? Sure! Good. So stick around and see what kind of tricks this little spaceship can do. Oh, forget it. Yoo-hoo! Where have you been? Yoo-hoo! Everybody, our little friend is back. Come on, say hello. Yoo-hoo, hi there. Oh, brother, that melody is too much. Melody, who's flying this little demon of the skies? Little pink men with purple eyes and orange noses? Of course not. Beep, 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 beep. We're being pulled down toward that freaky planet. Probably your little freaky friends are dragging us there. Huh. Oh, we're gonna crash! We're... We're down. A beautiful landing. It felt like we landed on a pillow. Something just landed on our roof. What could it be? Well, let's open the hatch and see. Hey, what's going on? It's a little spaceship. Who are you, toy soldier? I am Michko, all-powerful master of this planetoid. You are all under arrest. You look awfully familiar. Haven't we met someplace before? <laughs> Take them. They are our prisoners. If I didn't see this with my own eyes, I'd never believe it. Bleep, 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 bleep. Link says he believes it, too. You little pipsqueaks must be kidding. You take us prisoners? Ha! Huh. You said it, sis. I can handle a dozen of them myself. Take the arrogant one first. <laughs> I can tell you right now, you better send for the cavalry. Treat them like flies, Alexander. Right, sis. Shoo! 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 Uh. Uh. Hey, these little guys are kind of strong at that. Uh. Uh. Did I say kind of strong? I feel like I'm in a vice. Help! Help! I better give Alex a hand. <laughs> Like iron. <laughs> yes, they are. Men of iron. And completely under my control. Attaboy, Alan. Now the other one. Hey, take it easy. You want him off, don't you? 
don't you? Yeah, but I want to stay in one piece, too. Go on, Bleep. Make like a dog. Pick him. I'm sure glad this ground is soft. So there. Like my brother said, you better send for the cavalry if you expect to take us prisoners. No one dares defy the mighty Midgo. Yahoo! Oh my gosh! He did it! Did what? Sent for the cavalry! Let's split this scene on the double. Beep, 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 beep. You said it, Leap. I'm with you. It's every man for himself. <laughs> Capture all of them! They're getting closer. Everybody behind that tree up ahead. And keep low. Listen, gang. We're sitting ducks as long as we're on foot. But what can we do? This ground is almost like snow. Too bad we don't have some skis. You've given me an idea, Josie. See the robot driving that mini snowmobile or whatever it is they call that thing? Yeah. Well, make sure he sees you. And I'll snare him as he comes toward us, I hope. Ready, girls? OK, Alan. All set. It's not much, but we haven't any choice. But it beats water. It certainly does! This stuff may not be snow, but it ought to fool those robots. Right, Leap? Beep, 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 beep! But the mighty Midgo is not so easily tricked as his robots. Surrender to me peacefully, and there will be no need for any unpleasantness. <laughs> We pussycats don't know what the word means. Do we know what it means, Bleep? Then allow me to acquaint you with the word capture. Ready, aim, fire! <laughs> <laughs> We should have stayed with the others, dum-dum. You never had one good idea in your life. Oh, yeah? What about these special snowshoes I rigged up? Snowshoes made out of tennis rackets. Big deal. Well, somebody likes my ideas anyway. Lucky for him, I brought ping-pong paddles along, too. Hang on, gals. This is almost fun. They're closing in on us, Alan. Hang on tight. I'll duck into that canyon. Here they come, sis. Huh. What's eating you all of a sudden? You saw them. At a time like this, Josie has the nerve to ask Alan to take her and Valerie snow skiing. Ooh. Alan, we just passed Alex and Alexandra. Better turn back before we lose them. OK, hold on tight. Uh-oh. Still trying to escape me, eh? <laughs> Aha! One is attempting to escape. Show him that we are invincible. Alan, run, run! Alan, you're our only hope. Oh, poor Alan. <laughs> and so, my young friends, when my men brought your spaceship to my planetoid, I knew then that you had provided me with the perfect way to conquer Earth. Conquer Earth? What kind of dumb talk is that, you outer space tiny Tim? Your ship is so huge, it can easily carry my entire army of robots with their equipment. Then I shall overcome all Earthlings, as I have overcome all of you. My plan cannot possibly fail. It cannot fail! You've got to be out of your mini head. Quiet, troublemaker. I have plans for you. All of you. You shall be put to work helping me prepare for my invasion. Take them to the quarters at once. This is like a toy country.
with toys like them. I'd just as soon skip Christmas. And how are my guests today? I trust that things are reasonably comfortable, considering the circumstances, that is. If you dig being in jail, we're having a ball. Yeah, it's a million laughs. I shall have many questions for you. What are these? Oh, Groovy! You brought us our instruments. Instruments? They are not weapons of some sort? We make music on them. Music? What is music? Well, you see, Mr. Midgeko, music is like, I mean, it sort of... Um, never mind the explanation, Melody. Um, Mr. Midgeko, if you'll let us have those instruments, we'll demonstrate. Well, hmm. Guards, open! Better get back. Examine you a bit more closely? Not at all. Wow, this isn't going to be easy. Let's take a look at it. I'll try to figure it out. Hmm. It looks to me, if we turn a couple of these valves and reverse the memory intake, we might create a personality adjustment. Mr. Robot, how do you feel now? Wonderful. You are handsome creatures. You must be new here. Welcome. How neat! Mr. Robot has turned human. Almost. Back to work. Do you not realize the time is of the essence? Work, I say. I slave for you no longer, Midgeko. And that goes for my friends, too. A rebellion among my robots? I can't believe it. You are somehow responsible for this, and you shall pay. And pay very dearly. I'd say it's time to leave, and leave fast, if not sooner. Come on, everybody. We don't know the way out. Follow me. Robots, there are traitors among us. After them at once. I hope he knows what he's doing. Of course he knows. Alan helped to reprogram. Whee! This is fun. We used to play this when we were kids. called Follow the Leader. <laughs> Come back here, traitors! Follow me! Oh. Alex, don't be chicken. Let go! Don't let them get away! Hurry! Hurry! Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, hurry. The robots are gaining on us. 
at the end of the line. Look! They've got all their rope bazookas aimed right at us. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah. We're in a trap. <laughs> now I have you surrounded. What are we going to do? Don't worry. Do as I say. <laughs> Everybody, now hear this. Ready? And hear this. I don't think Mr. Midgego will be available either. <laughs> yeah, he's sure going to be busy untying knots. And don't forget, we owe a debt of gratitude to the latest member of the human race, Mr. Robot. It was nothing besides what our friends for. Well, the outside of the ship looks OK. Yeah, but look inside. It's empty! Oh, no! Midgego sure did a job on it, trying to make as much room as possible for his invasion forces. Does that mean we're stranded here with Midgego and his mini-men? Not at all. Since you were kind enough to reprogram my personality, I have done the same for many of my friends. Look! Well, how about that? It's not like him to give in so easily. With so many of us robots reprogrammed in a more, uh, human manner, he can no longer control us as he did. We may even let him stay on as our leader. Thank you. I may as well. As long as I can never achieve my original invasion plans. You wouldn't have liked it there anyway, Mr. Mitchko. Remember what I told you about the smog and pollution and stuff? Thanks a lot. Well, thanks a million for programming our navigational computer toward Earth. With your help, I'm sure we'll make it back. There it is! Earth! We're actually headed back toward Earth! Robots or not, they sure know their outer space navigation. Now we pull the re-entry stabilizer. No, Valerie. They said to use the push lever at this point. Pull! Push! Now, wait a minute. Let's review the whole thing. I know exactly what I'm doing. Right on target. I say push! Pull! Yeah, yeah Alexandra. Alexandra, pull! Yeah, Alexander, pull! Yeah! Get real fruit energy, concentrated in Del Monte fruit snacks like yogurt raisins or tropical fruit mix. Tasty, chewy snacks packed with concentrated fruit energy. They're a powerful good snack. I am proud to be blue. I'm very proud to be me. If I'm the best me that I can be, then I'm proud, so proud to be me. And I am glad to be me When I look in the mirror and I Teddy Ruxpin, Grubby and Fob Hand Puppets From Worlds of Wonder You know, it's funny going back and rereading some of these uh, Old Fantastic Fours where Ben Grimm leaves Because um, I remember them throwing a, people throwing a fit back in the day Because they wanted... I like She-Hulk as part of the Fantastic Four. I, I liked her run. Am I a bigger fan of the uh, thing, Human Torch dynamic, all that stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that. But I don't think She-Hulk was bad. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed Josie in Space. Um, 
Like I said, there ain't my whole lot I can talk about that one. Josie and the Pussycats is a classic. It's fun. People remember it to this day for reasons. And uh, I'm still putting it out there. What would Josie and the Pussycats be in the Life After Archie universe? Because you got Jughead the Hunger. He's a werewolf. You got Vampironica, where, uh, vampire. Um, you got The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which she's still a witch, but like more witchy, I guess. I, I don't know how to explain that one. Um, you have all these things, but tell me, what do you think that Josie and the Pussycats would be in the Dark Universe? Just want to know. <sighs> Thinking of, now we're going from Josie and the Pussycats to Apes. Um, that is Planet Return of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I haven't aired a few episodes of this in a while, but or I haven't aired episodes of this in a while. <sighs> Take two. Okay. I have not aired many episodes of this in a while. God, I still screwed it up. I have not aired episodes of this in a while. Why do I keep wanting to put many in there? All right. So this is <laughs> Return of the Planet of the Apes. This is episode nine. And this is Trail to the Unknown. Enjoy. We can only take along what we absolutely need, Nova. Anything extra can slow us down. How much longer before the rafts will be finished? A couple of days at the most. We have to hurry. Urko's attack may come at any time. I know. Dr. Zeus, what a pleasant surprise. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? I believe, my children, that without knowing it, I am greatly in your debt. What do you mean, sir? Whoever stole the aircraft from Urko has saved Apekind from being taken over by his military dictatorship. Only a citizen of great loyalty would have risked so much to capture that plane and save our society. And I have come here to express my gratitude for your heroism. Dr. Zayas, truly you don't think we stole Erko's plane? I know your quiet modesty and the danger you would be in if Erko found out, but your secret is safe with me and I will never forget your loyalty. But, Dr. Zeus, we had nothing to do with it. We were... My child, you have nothing to fear. Urko has no idea who stole the plane. Besides, he has asked to mount a reconnaissance force against the caves of the humanoids. I have reluctantly given him my permission. He claims he will find your blue eyes there. It will keep him occupied, and you two will be safe from suspicion. We're ready to shove off, Bill. Good. We can cover a lot of distance before nightfall. I wonder what New Valley will be like. 
whether it will offer the kind of protection the humanoids need. Cornelius thought it would. And according to the map he gave us, New Valley is sure remote. Any place has to be safer than these caves. Okay, let's move out. Nova tells me some of the humanoids have become ill. They want to turn back. There's no turning back, Judy. We have to go on. It's our only hope. I wonder if there was an easier way to reach New Valley. I trust Cornelius. If there was, he would have told us. Just a little more and we'll be through the worst of it. I don't know. Bill, watch out! Bill, it's terrible. What can we do? Flap your arms in the air like this. The movement might scare them away. Nova, like this. Wave your arms like this. That's it, Nova. That's it. We did it. They're gone. Let's get going. I wonder what's beyond that turn. It's incredible. One moment we're in a jungle thicker than I thought could have existed, and the next we're in an area where there's not a solitary sign of life. According to the map, we should be coming to the place where we leave the river and continue the journey overland. How will we ever get all the way up there? Thieves! Traitors! That's who it was. Traitors to Ape Klein who stole my aircraft. Never have I been so humiliated. And to think, there I was on the brink of total power. I want the aircraft returned, do you understand? I demand it be recaptured at once! We're doing our best, sir. Your best isn't good enough. Or else, how do you explain allowing the plane to be stolen from under your noses in the first place? We're narrowing down our list of suspects, General Urko. To me, you're all suspects. How do I know it wasn't one of you who betrayed me? This entire mess smacks of an inside job. After all, the existence of the airplane was a closely guarded military secret, unknown to anyone on the outside. Well, someone on the outside must have known about it, sir. I want an immediate review of all security procedures. I will give a reward of 1,000 pieces of simian silver to the patriotic ape who exposes the guilty party. Now, what about our plan of attack on the humanoids? The army's ready, sir. All units have been alerted and are prepared to march. Good. What we need now is a smashing victory to restore confidence in the military. Yes, sir. We move out at dawn. I'm so worried, Cornelius. Urko's attack on the humanoid's cave is imminent. 
It will be a catastrophe if his army finds Bill, Jeff, and Judy there. I know, Zara, I know. Isn't there anything we can do to help them? You and I have done more for the humanoids than any apes have ever done. No, Zira, there's nothing more we can do except maybe hope that Jeff and Judy and Bill can return the humanoids to New Valley before Urko and his army catches up with them. The heat, it's like a furnace. But we've got to go on. some water. There seems to have been quite a bit of activity at the riverbank, General. What would the humanoids be doing at the river? They're too stupid to swim! Wait a minute! Rafts! The humanoids must have somehow understood to chop down those trees to build rafts! They're trying to escape via the river! After them! After them! But, General, we're not prepared for river travel. Why not? We didn't bring any impure permission from the Council of Elders for this type of operation. Run on the Council of Elders! They're nothing but a bunch of old freaking apes! If it wasn't for them, I would have rid us of the humanoid problem years ago. But, General, the laws are very strict. I know. I know. Call for the river craft and keep the army in full readiness. I'll push this thing through the Council, no matter what kind of threats I have to make. to find shelter and quick. Wait a minute. What's that? It's a mesa of some sort. It'll help protect us. How long do you figure the storm will last? I don't know. It doesn't seem to be getting any better. We'd better count on spending the night here. I can't believe it. Bill, it's a it's a spaceship. An American spaceship. Incredible. Another astronaut has crash landed on this planet. This ship could have gone through the same time warp we did. But whose craft is it? And how long has it been here? The dog tag Nova's wearing. Brent, this must be Colonel Brent's rocket ship. Brent? But where is he? You mean he is still alive? But, Brent, 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 Brent. Nova, 
Nova. You were just a little girl when I saw you last. How you've grown and how pretty you are. When exactly was your flight launched, Colonel Brent? Oh, Ron, call me Ron. I was launched August 6th, 2109, from a site in the Mojave Desert. Mojave Desert? What happened to Cape Kennedy? Cape Kennedy was turned into a space museum at least 60 years before I was born. But if you were launched more than 150 years after us, how did you get here before we did? I guess we made quite a bit of progress in rocket fuels and capsule design in those 150 years. Yes, I guess so. As best I can calculate, I crash-landed here some 15 to 20 years ago. I can't tell exactly, because it's pretty difficult to keep track of time in the desert. After the crash landing, when I came to, I discovered my leg was broken. I was alone and unable to take care of myself. Things got pretty hairy for a while. Then, quite by chance, I was found by a tribe of wanderers who seemed to be straight out of prehistoric times. Well, they were friendly enough and remained with me while I convalesced. That's when I met Nova. She was one of the tribe's children. I taught her to say my name, and she adopted me. After I was well enough to walk, I decided to accompany the tribe to wherever it was they were going. However, during a sandstorm, I became separated from the group and was never able to find them again. So I returned to my ship and made it my headquarters. I've been living alone in the desert ever since. Over the years, I've made many forays into the wilderness, hoping to find the tribe. I had all but given up hope. Well, Ron, on behalf of all of us, welcome back to the human race. Thank you. Thank you all. We'd better be on our way. I still don't know what brought you this way. Where are you leading the tribe? To a place called New Valley. According to this map, it lies about 25 miles south of here. I know the valley. I used to go there to fish. I can lead you there. That's great. Let's get started. Ron, is there anything in the spacecraft you want to take along? Nothing much survived, except me, the spaceship, and its self-destruct mechanism. Self-destruct mechanism, huh? Let's take it along. It just might come in handy someday. Sure thing. It won't take but a few minutes to disengage. Good. That'll give me a chance to fill you in on the one rather unusual aspect of this planet. General Urko. It is the opinion of this council that your military leadership leaves a great deal to be desired. How dare you question my ability? It comes into serious question, General Erko, when you spend a great deal of time publicly preparing to do battle with an enemy you can't even locate. Let the council grant me permission to pursue the humanoid beasts. I give you my oath. I will take proper care of them. Frankly, we have absolutely no reason to place any confidence in your promises. Let me give them chase. I shall hunt down the humanoids and make you eat your words. If your recent performance is any indication, I rather doubt that, General. The blue-eyed beast is leading them away. Who knows when they may return in numbers? Armed, crazed, to infest our cities, threaten our children. You may launch a mission to find out where they have gone but you will require a mandate from the Council of Elders before you may attack. It's beautiful. This place is everything you had hoped it would be? Now, if we can construct the proper defenses, Perhaps the humanoids can finally find some peace and tranquility. Look at those boulders. The laser drill should be able to cut through them to make building blocks. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Sniveling Dr. Zayas a thing or two. Imagine him doubting my ability. What insolence. The motorized units are ready to move out, sir. Well, why have we delayed? Let's go, on the double. How's it going? Fine. The humanoids are quick to learn. There's still a lot left to be done. Our 
advanced scouts have picked up the humanoid's trail, sir. Good. Where are they? They seem to be moving through the southern desert. The southern desert? That region hasn't even been explored yet. I wonder where they are headed. We don't know, sir. Why not? Why can't I get a straight answer from anybody? Is there a conspiracy against me? No, sir. When we locate the humanoid beasts, we may have to attack in self-defense. Speed up the convoy. The Pueblos are almost complete. All that remains are a few finishing touches. They seem solid enough. Just like the Indians in Arizona and New Mexico once had. Their Pueblos lasted for hundreds of years. I wonder if these will be granted as much time. Only the centuries will tell. Faster! Move them faster! Charge! Erko has followed us here. Quick, get everyone inside the Pueblos. we have to hope our strategy works. Let's all keep our fingers crossed. <coughs> Retreat! <coughs> Retreat! Impossible! The humanoid beasts are too stupid to know how to defend themselves. Our grenade just couldn't penetrate the shutters, General. And our ladders aren't long enough to reach the doors of the buildings. Then order the artillery to be brought up. Sir, we didn't bring the howitzers with us. What? You mean we came all this way without the proper weapons? Idiots! You're all idiots! I can't rely on any of you for anything. Here we have the entire tribe of humanoid beasts trapped, and we can't finish them off. You'll all pay dearly for this. What should we do, General? You'll do nothing. From now on, I will do. The army is to return to Ape City. It will be resupplied with every piece of military equipment known to Ape kind. I'll rid this planet of the humanoid plague yet. Our worries aren't over yet. The gorillas are sure to attack again. And this time, they're bound to employ all of their firepower. What can we do? These Pueblos will never withstand an artillery barrage. Our only chance is to stop the guerrilla army from entering New Valley. But with artillery firepower behind them, it'll be impossible. Not if we destroy the land bridge. Destroy the land bridge? How? With Ron's spacecraft self-destruct mechanism. We'll use it to blow up the land bridge. Sure. That way, Urkel will never be able to roll his heavy guns into the valley. Great idea. Well, what are we waiting for? Did you set the charge, Jeff? It's all set. How about yours? Roger. Let's go. OK. Nova, you may have the honor of pressing the igniter button. We sure have. They'll never be able to get us now. We still have to get the airplane. There are guerrilla soldiers everywhere out there. I know, but it has to be done. The apes are bound to attack again, and soon.
it's not working. Then how can we finish my Happy Meal? We'll use our backup system. Back up. A little more. How's this? Fine. <laughs> it works. I love having a dragon around for emergencies. Call me if you need me. Whoa, Spider-Man! Sorry I can't hang around. Because the action's at McDonald's. Now you can get a Spider-Man Happy Meal with cool characters and their hot cars. Spider-Man, I just saw Scorpion in the drive-thru. One with every Spider-Man Happy Meal you buy. On the Disney Sunday movie. Mr. Boogity is coming back. And he's looking for the perfect mate. Who are you? Boogity. Just kidding. The whole family is invited to meet the bride of Boogity. You know, I kind of dug like the house ads back in the day. That's Catman's take his broken glasses off. Man, just the goofiness of some of this stuff. Like, there we go. Four more triumphs from Marvel on sale now. West Coast Avengers, Power Pack, X-Men, Peter Parker and his Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, and I read all four of those back in the day. Because I read a lot. A lot of comics. So, hope you guys are still digging the Planet of the Apes. Um, I know I do. Like I said, I, mean, I like it because it's closer to the books. The original book, I should say. So... We're going to keep it going. We're going over here. And uh, I guess we're going to start into the filmation. Uh, because we're doing some Fantastic Voyage. Uh, I have not done a Fantastic Voyage in a while. And we're going to remedy that. So. Here you guys go. This is Fantastic Voyage. This is episode 12. And it's the first man on the moon. So. We always have the ongoing joke. This is the first man on the moon. You know, Russia was the first country to put a man in the moon. <laughs> we have an ongoing joke that the, that, the, that space is full of just dead cosmonauts. They're just, it's just lousy with them. Like, if you were to go into space and, you know, you're out working on the International Space Station, you would, like, bump into the dead body of a Russian cosmonaut. I know it's morbid as hell, but, hey, we're not Russia. Just saying. So, here you guys go. Fantastic Voyage, episode 12. First man on the moon. Enjoy. Headquarters. CMDF, Combined Miniature Defense Force. Project Fantastic Voyage. Process, miniaturization. Authority, top secret, highest clearance. Team, Jonathan Kidd, commander. Guru, master of mysterious powers. Erica Lane, doctor, biologist. Busby Birdwell, scientist, inventor, builder of the Voyager. Mission, in their miniaturized form, to combat the unseen, unsuspected enemies of freedom. Time limit, 12 hours. Eliminated. I say the CMDF must be eliminated. Dispense with once and for all. I trust I make myself clear. We cannot afford to let this so-called combined miniature deterrent force drain our resources a minute longer. And I personally guarantee that it shall not. Who are they, an international crime syndicate? Their names are unimportant, but they represent the greatest danger we have ever faced. Well, let's get going, sir. What do we fight them with? With those. There's your assignment, to help clean up the headquarters right now. What? I don't understand. Who is he? That is Government Finance Commissioner Selwyn J. Upjohn. Mr. Upjohn claims the CMDF is a waste of the taxpayers' money, and he intends to destroy us by taking away our operating funds. He'll be here in an hour for a final inspection. We've well, got to make a good impression, or else. Yeah, or else I won't get paid this week. I still don't see why I have to wear this monkey suit. Because we've got to impress the commissioner, Busby. 
You want to get paid, don't you? Here he comes. Welcome to CMDF headquarters, Commissioner. Allow me to introduce our team. Commander Jonathan Kidd, Erica Lane, Busby Birdwell. <laughs> Birdwell? That's the stupidest name I've ever heard. Be quiet, Alvin. This is my son, Alvin. Alvin is a scientific genius, so you won't fool him. I don't care about this junk. I'm going to be a space scientist. Not if I get my hands on you, you won't. Quiet, Busby. Well, that's Guru, the fourth member of the team. Oh, well, unless I see something here to change my mind, there won't be a team very long. Father, I don't think that man likes me. Of course he does, Alvin. Go shake hands. Hey, you see. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I laughed at your name, sir. Oh, that's all right. Shame. <laughs> I fooled you. See, I made it myself in my workshop. Alvin, stop fooling around. Carter, let's see this so-called miniaturization machine. I haven't got all day. Right this way, Commissioner. What does this knob do? No, don't turn those. They're not set. Then I'll set them. <laughs> This is fun. What about these? Oh, no. My best dress. <laughs> Do something, Guru, or I swear I'll... Leave it to me, Miss Lane. <sighs> Spoil sport. What happens if I turn this one? I would not turn that. I will if I want to. <laughs> Have you any more questions, young man? You tricked me! I'll get you for that! You wait! I'll get you! Nice work, Guru! Boy, what a brat. What he needs is a good spanking. And would I love to give it to him! They'll be sorry. I'll get them. I wonder what's in there. What's that? The Voyager! Yeah! This is the miniaturization control room, Commissioner. <laughs> Looks like it costs a lot of money. We've arranged a little demonstration. We're going to miniaturize and show you how it's done. Start process. Hmm. That uses an awful lot of electricity. End process. Now watch this, Commissioner. Radio beam on. Well, sir? Very interesting. But I still don't see what good it is. And it's too expensive. Alvin, we're leaving. Alvin, where are you? Come here. Okay, Busby. Let's head back and hear the bad news. Hey, what? The steering's falling apart. I can't turn it. Alvin, where is that boy? Find him, Carter. Of course, sir. The alarm. Emergency. Emergency. Ship out of control. Get your position, kid. The radio. We've been sabotaged. What? That's terrible. Never mind that. Where's my son? I don't know, and I don't... Oh, no. You don't think you mean Alvin? Where are we headed, Busby? Beats me. But something's definitely got control of the ship. There's something ahead. But what is it? It looks like something from outer space. We're heading inside. Where are we? Look out! Busby, we're going to crash! Turn it, Busby! With what? My feet! No, Miss Lane. This is a man-made moon. Look. I don't see anything. A seam. 
But how? Why? Attention! Attention! 20 minutes to experiment. Prepare for launch. Look, a speaker. So that's it. That's what? I think we're in the Experimental Space Center. This must be their moon model, a perfect reproduction of the moon. Except that it's on Earth, thank goodness. Oh, don't be too happy. If those space scientists find out we're here, I'd rather be on the moon. Did you say space scientists, Mr. Kidd? Yes, space scientists. Alvin. Alvin! He did it! He tampered with the controls. That's why we're here. Oh, where is he? I'll strangle him. The hole. He must be in there. Come out, you little monster, or I'll... He's not there. <laughs> I knew you'd look there. I'll eradicate you. You'll have to catch me first, Mr. Bird Brain. I will. When I said this was a perfect moon model, I was righter than I thought. There's practically no gravity, just like the real moon. Here, put this on. We've got to get to Busby before the lack of air gets to him. Watch the ship, Guru. We'll be right back, I hope. That way. You mean you've let Alvin get miniaturized? This is an outrage. I agree, Commissioner. Especially since your precious little boy has apparently sabotaged a top secret government operation. What? Oh, ridiculous. Alvin would never do anything like that. Uh, where is he? I want him back. So do I. We've lost them. Busby! Busby, can you hear me? Come in, come in! Kid! Kid! Where are you? Quickly! Can the canal near Blue Crater. Hurry. Can't breathe. That must be it. Wait here. Gosh, this is sure lonely. It's like being the only human being in existence. Oh! <laughs> Can't catch me! We'll see about that. Where are you? Busby! 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 I should have known, but... Attention! Attention! Moon being sealed. Experimental tests begin in two minutes. Uh-oh. Now we're really in for it. Well, we'll soon see if our calculations are correct, gentlemen. We shall indeed. And if they are, it will give us the lead in space travel instead of them. Yes, let's test the surface. What do you think these experiments are? We'll soon find out the hard way. So will Alvin. That's something anyway. I don't see. Say, what's that? It's turning to chalk. Not chalk. Ice. Everything's freezing. What, what are they doing? The, they're probably t -t testing moon conditions. How uh, uh, cold is the moon gas? 300 degrees below zero. My helmet, it, it's freezing. Can't last much longer. Eric, freezing, uh, uh, can't move. Minimum temperature, sir. Good. Next test. Oh, oh that was just in time. Everybody, all right? I think so, but not by much. That's for sure. Now I know how an ice cube feels. I wonder what's next. Uh-oh. There's your answer. Heat. That figures. 
How hot does the moon get? About 300 degrees above. Well, here comes a fast sun tan. Oh, gosh. It's hot. I think I'm melting. Maximum temperature, sir. Good. Now, uh, turn it off. Let's get on with the important test. I quite agree. All right. Maybe I should just stay on my back. I always seem to end up there. Get up, Busby. We've got to get moving. I'm coming. Whoops! What's that? What's this doing here? Come on, Busby. What have you got there? It's a bug. Oh, for crying out loud, now he's collecting insects. I mean the kind spies use. Look. He's right. And that means one of those scientists must have planted it to pick up later. And deliver to the enemy. Begin the test. We gotta warn them somehow. Attention, attention. Commence test, phase one. A moon landing. What did you expect, an egg rolling contest? I wonder what they'd think if they knew someone had already landed on their moon. Alan! He wouldn't. Oh, yes, he would. <laughs> So far, so good. Fire retro rocket. Here it comes. A perfect landing. It has worked. Yeah, that is just what we wanted to know. Boy, that's some camera. Look, over there. No, Alvin, stop. Picking up moon camera. Camera? Wait! What's that? Hi! I bet you're surprised to see me here. <laughs> there, there's someone there. It's, it's, it's a spy. A spy? That's impossible. Preposterous. No, it must be a mistake. It's no mistake. Come on, run for the Voyager. It's over here. Where? Right over there. Keep searching. It must be there someplace. Guru must have hidden the ship. But where? Mr. Kid. Guru, where are you? There is an old proverb. Diamonds are sometimes found in the dust. Proverbs, him and his double talk. Who needs diamonds? Dust, huh? OK, let's go. Where? Just follow me and move it. I'm moving. <laughs> Where am I? Ouch! Ow! You could have warned me. You're lucky I caught you. Use the laser. We've got to get to the bottom of this. Yes, sir. Looks like they mean business this time. What about Alvin? Oh, he'll think of something. Not this time, Busby. We've got to find him, quickly. Mr. Kidd is right. Help! Someone help me! We must hurry. I want my mother! What I caught. I didn't need you. Put me down. You heard him. Throw him back. It'll be a pleasure. No, no, help! Don't. I'll be good. I promise. Don't. Ah! Oh. Any more orders? No, sir. Hang on. We've got to move. What was that? Did you see anything? I'm not sure. Keep searching. Hey, what now? Oh. 
must be destroying the model. You mean the spy is to get rid of the evidence and us. We haven't got a chance unless... Who started the self-destruct? It's too late to stop it now. I hope this works. Can you run it, Busby? Yeah, but I can't start it. All right. Alvin. Yes, sir. You want to be a space scientist? Well, here's your chance. Start this thing. Yes, sir. Come on, Busby. Uh, I mean, Mr. Birdwell. Now that's better. Hurry. Get the launchers. Hurry. Open the top! At least we'll save that! The top is opening! Your plan worked, Jonathan! Yep, but it was pretty close! Okay, Busby! Nice going, Alvin! Now, let's get out of here! Just a second! Don't forget this! Somebody's in for a surprise! A very unpleasant one! Well, that's the end of... Say, what's that? It looks like electronic equipment, but not ours. Call security, quickly! So, you were going to destroy the evidence, were you? You don't understand. Oh, I think I do. Now... That does it. Yeah, right. Let's go. Now we have to face the real danger. Commissioner Upjohn. Oh, maybe he won't be so bad. Right, Alvin? Gentlemen, Alvin and I both wish to apologize. I am now convinced of the importance of the CMDF. And I am stopping the investigation. On one condition. That someday, if he works hard enough and deserves it, you'll let Alvin come back and see you. Please? Sure thing. Right. After all, who's going to pilot the Voyager when I retire? There's something fishy in the forest. When the Smurfs and an all-new Kissy Fur join together for a one-hour special, it's going to be... Lots of fun! Sunday. This Sunday, the mission where the lives of ten men rest in the power of one. Sunday, a special one-hour episode. Amazing story. So, if you guys can hear that, I got this chair, and now every time I'm moving it, I feel like I'm making fart noises. <laughs> So if if you pick it up, it's it's my lumbar cushion. See, I'm old. I need a lumbar cushion. <laughs> Actually, nah. It's it's a gaming chair, so it it, it works great because I have the lumbar cushion and then I have the neck cushion, which slides on me though. That sucks. But I dig this chair. And I want to say thank you because uh, you guys, you Patreons out there, got me a chair and it is uh, oh so damn comfortable. I love this chair. So, 
I, I would, I would, in the it reclines too, and it was nice. It was not a bad price. Uh, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, and these people are not giving me any money, but if you can find one, um, I probably should have got white. Uh, probably should have double checked that before I ordered it. Um, that was me, but I don't care. I kind of like it. Digging it, it's white. I wish I would have bought the red one, but whatever. So, hope you guys still dig Fantastic Voyages. Um, I, to be honest, man, when I rediscovered this, I was like, man, how long could this go? Because Fantastic Voyage is kind of a one-shot thing, but nope. They figured it out how to make an episode every week. And we're going to one of my favorite Funimation cards. Film Funimation, completely different thing there. Uh, that is Black Star. Going to bring you some more Black Star as we close in on the end of black star uh, so we'll, we'll be bringing you something else I'll, I'll find something to fill this this void when black star leaves actually I'm, I'm i'm checking out new cartoons every week that's why you guys got the new cartoons the last few weeks boom new one boom new one boom new one and those are surprising the heck out of me um so here you guys go this is black star episode 11 and this is overlord's big spell Enjoy. John Blackstar, astronaut. Is swept through a black hole into an ancient alien universe. Trapped on the planet Sagar, Blackstar is rescued by the tiny Trobit people. In turn, he joins their fight for freedom against the cruel overlord. who rules by the might of the Power Star. The Power Star is split into the Power Sword and the Star Sword. And so, with Star Sword in hand, Black Star, together with his allies, sets out to save the planet Sagar. This is his destiny. I am John Black Star. Now that's a meal for a trouble. Oh, what a lovely day to drift in the wind. <laughs> Not a storm cloud in the sky. Watch, Burble. It's a simple bit of magic. You just have to practice. Yeah, simple for you. Understand it. That shouldn't have happened. You talk about fast meals. like Gossamer needs a little assistance. <sighs> Sometimes solid ground is even better than open sky.
has done this to you, Mara? A storm? This is not a storm. It's a spell. Something is drawing out all the magic of this planet, drawing it to the north. To the kingdom of ice. That means the overlord. Yes. And when all the magic is gone, I will cease to exist. We must stop the Overlord before it's too late. Clone, Balkar, I'll need your help. We'll set off immediately. Province, Kendamara, and stay inside the Sagar tree. Magic keeps this forest safe. With it gone, evil things will run wild. My greatest spell, Vizier, and soon it will be complete. Power, undrained of power. But there's great danger, too. The spell could run out of control, destroy us all. I know what I'm doing. Do not challenge me. Never, my lord. Your only challenge comes from the one who wields the Star Soul. Black Star, that rebel. Where is he? He has come here. Very well, then. Welcome him, Vizier. Call out the Piranha Fox. Just think, clone. This is the calm before the big storm. If this isn't a storm, it's sure doing a good imitation. Great. Sega! Piranha Hawks! gotten to. I can't see it for the storm clouds. He plays rough. Well, so can we. Out! You led with your chin, buddy. Huh? Just an old Earth expression. Things never happened like this back on Earth. Come on, warlock. Aha! That cave should do the trick. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Everything will 
turn out all right. You'll see. Yeah, that's right. And we're just gonna fix you up <laughs> and fit as a fiddle. A little trumpet magic should do the trick. Gosh, Burble, I wouldn't mess with Balcar's book of magic if I were you. But Mara's stating fast. We gotta help her. Yeah, pipe down. I think I found it. It says here, when an evil spell comes one day to take your magic far away. Stop the evil, Stormy Cloud, by saying these magic words out loud. Trobit Myth and Trobit Lore can spot all evil, but Breloran. Mara, you're still glowing. <sighs> I'm afraid Rift's spell didn't work. I don't get it. Watch this. If these magic words are wrong, it means the evil is too strong. It means Breelerand will come along. Breelerand? Who's Breelerand? Yay! Just hang on, Mara. Please! Unless Blackstar hurries, it will be too late. I have only a little magic left, and I grow weaker by the moment. See anything? Nothing but the storm. Oh, bad weather for planting. I wish Balkar would get back. Things just don't feel right. Oh, don't be so silly. Terra, terra, behind you. Find something to block up the windows! Now to find the Overlord. You have found him, Blackstar, but you have found him too late. creation and my slave here comes the big storm you were talking about Breloland destroy my enemies <laughs> as though the Overlord's plan has backfired. But is that thing on our side? I guess he isn't. Blackstar, are you all right? What power? I've never felt anything like it. We have to stop him now. He's growing stronger. You and Clone stay here, Balkar. Warlock? It's flying time! This has got to be our best shot, Warlock. He threw off the blast! Incredible! Let's turn up the heat, Warlock.
our times, when being a shape changer certainly has its advantages. <laughs> Reel around! You pay for your defiance! The Overlord's doing even worse than we are. I'm gonna hate myself for this, but... Departed to gather more magic. He'll destroy this world, Overlord. Neither of us can defeat him, alone. So that's why you saved me. You want my help. We have to work together, Overlord. A truce? As long as Breelorand is a menace. Very well, Rebel. But just this once. <laughs> have left. Thanks, Mara. Yeah, without your help, we'd been Trobbits too. Mara? She's gone! What's that? Uprooting the Sagar tree. He's gaining power. We must stop him now. Helping Trobbits, it pains me. It's Blackstar! And the Overlord! <laughs> Now! Black Star, you save the day! Mara, how is she? Good. She used the last of her magic to save us. Never turn your back on an enemy, Black Star. You dare not strike me for fear of hitting the trumpet. Now, give me the Star Sword. Sorry, is this? Mine! Mara, 
my old self again. <laughs> Thanks to you. No one makes a fool of the Overlord. We'll just see about that. My power sword! I have it. Farewell, Black Star, until we meet again. I almost had him. At least he's gone. For now. But you got rid of Breloran for good. That sure was a close one, Mara. We thought you was gone for good. I was gone. For a while. When the Overlord took all the planet's magic to create Breelorand, I faded away. But by destroying Breelorand, the magic was released. And it gave me the power to return. And speaking of magic... Magic takes years of practice, Burble. Look, Balgar, I can levitate the Sagar fruit, too. <laughs> With a little help from his friend. by mail I thought it was hard enough learning martial arts by books but man except for Bruce Lee's books man not gonna lie those are pretty just self-explanatory man they, they so but that's Bruce Lee you know he was above all the rest of us so we have the ongoing uh, uh, theory that that uh, Bruce Lee did not die he just descended But I hope you guys still dig Black Star. We're on episode 11. That's two episodes left, man. Next two weeks and we're done. Done with Black Star. And that's a shame. Somebody needs to redo something. I, like I said, I'm reaching out to everybody. Uh, Ramen Toys, looking at you guys, man. Do something with uh, Black Star. Just going to put that out there. Maybe in the Cell Toys. Somebody. Pick it up. Mattel, please. Put him in the Master Line. Just saying. God dang. It's a shame he is forgotten. Because they had cool toys. I mean, look at them. I love them little goblin dudes, man. Little gremlins. They look exactly like gremlins with tails. But, speaking of which, we're going to keep it going. And we're going over here to He-Man. And the Masters of the Universe. Or some people call it Motu. Um, I've referred to Motu and I've had people just stare at me. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, um, it's uh, Masters of the Universe. What's Motu stand for? Masters of the Universe. <laughs> but it is a time just time, man He Man's gonna be around. But He Man's been around for over forty years. For forty years, like right at forty years. And he's still here. 
he's never totally went away. Um, I think He-Man, G.I. Joe, Transformers, all these cartoons are going to be like the Speed Racer and, and uh, uh, Popeye and stuff of, of the early years. Because, man, these are just going to be ones that stick around forever. I mean, I grew up on Transformers. My kids grew up on Transformers. My youngest son is growing up on Transformers. I'm sure when I have grandkids, they will grow up on Transformers. Actually, I, I they will probably even if they don't want to or not because uh, I'm Transformer fan. My kids are Transformers fans. Um, just saying, He Man, same thing. Man, the, the, there's always going to be somebody watching He Man. So, but this is He Man. This is episode six, and this is the Time Corridor. Enjoy. And the masters of the universe. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! became the mighty battle cat and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the Sorceress, Man-at-Arms, and Orko. Together we defend Castle Grayskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. of Castle Grayskull. Says, great power, Skeletor. But is it enough to destroy Grayskull? When the wheel is in the right spot, there won't be a Castle Grayskull, and I shall rule all Eternia. What about He-Man? <laughs> where we're going, even He-Man can't stop us. And where is that? We are going back in time to a time when there was no Castle Grayskull. <laughs> Marvelous day for a picnic. And some magic. Let's see. That's a useful trick. I uh, believe that's big enough. Mm, must have overdone it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Orco. <laughs> Soar! He's summoning us to Castle Grayskull. Let's go. The only place I want to go is home. <laughs> There is 
is danger lurking. Look into the window of time and see the danger. Skeletor. The demon is building a fortress, but where? Here, on the very spot where Castle Grayskull stands. That's impossible, isn't it? Unfortunately, no. Skeletor has opened a corridor in time and traveled back to Eternia's past. What good will a fortress in the past do him? The fortress protects the Wheel of Infinity. If Skeletor starts the wheel spinning, it will go faster and faster and grow larger and larger until it is fast enough and big enough to destroy this castle. And Skeletor's evil will rule Eternia. You must go back in time and stop Skeletor. Then let's do it by the power of Grayskull. <laughs> I was afraid this would happen. <laughs> So, this is what Evergreen Forest looked like in the past. Ugh, yeah, and I guess that's what Eternians looked like. Sanda kata, kata shi aru. Easy battle, cat. We want to be friends. Orko, the sorceress said you could make sense out of their language. Right, if I can just remember that spell. Let's see, uh, scribble dee do scrabble dee oh, no. Da, da, na, shara, go, da, da. Come on, Arco, they're headed this way. A uh, scr uh, scrabble dee do a uh, sh shickle dee sham I mean, shabble dee's magic, I mean, wait, that, that's it. A uh, scrabble dee magic, scribble dee deer. And uh, now by this magic, words be clear. Shara, go, na. You do serve the ghost face. Galloping galaxy! Uh, I did it! Man, she said ghost face. She must mean Skeletor. We are friends. We want to help you. You've got to believe me. We... Drag us on! My blaster won't work. Look out, He-Man! Lucky that wind came along. Not luck, man at arms. My magic. I don't know why, but my magic seems stronger here. And not that it wasn't always great. Help! Let's move it. Dragon breath. Have you out in a minute, folks. Come on. <laughs> he man, the pit's clear. Back, Battle Cat. Okay, you big bully. Come and get us. That should hold work. 
warm place for a little bit. Oh, you have proved yourself friends to the Snake Clan, E-Man. How may we help you? Tell us everything you know about Skeletor, the one you call Ghostface. He came to our land a short while ago, and with his evil power, took control of Olo, master of the Ape Clan. Once the ape men were our friends, now they hunt us, trapping our people and forcing them to work as slaves in the fortress of the ghost base. Can you lead us to this fortress? I don't wish to see you destroyed. Don't worry, we'll be careful. And we do have surprise on our side. That's what you think, E-Man. Olo, gather your warriors. We'll show E-Man a little surprise of our own. <laughs> that once, Skeletor. <laughs> it's too quiet. Then let's make a little noise. Give up, Skeletor, or we'll turn your fortress into toothpicks. <laughs> let's see you try it. Oh. Let's get him. For Eternia and Grayskull! Stop them! Drop in, Skeletor! Eight men, get them! That club would make a fine toothpick. <laughs> that should cool him off. My pretty, have a little sleeping gas. He man, they've got Zalora. Skeletor, stop! Too late, fools! Now you have a choice: save Castle Grayskull, or try to save this woman from Dragosaur Isle. <laughs> <laughs> Dragosaur Isle. He-Man's here! Good! While he wastes his time trying to rescue Zelora, the moment I have waited for approaches! This time, I can't lose. But what do we do if he comes here? The terrors of the jungle will take care of him. And if they don't, we'll do it ourselves.
Let's keep alert. I'm sure that's only the first of Skeletor's nasty tricks. for your beauty to chew on, Fang Man. Hold it, Skeletor. It's too late. This spell will trap her forever between time and space. I'm coming! Stay back! This cage is alive with Skeletor's magic! Thank you. Oh, thank you. Good work. Not good enough. Skeletor got away. He-Man, listen. The window of time will soon draw you back. You have only a little while to stop Skeletor. Sorceress, can you help us? I shall do what I can. Blasters might work again. <laughs> the moment has come. Skeletor. Demon, you won't stop me now. You've had it, Skullface. I'll show you power. You want power, Skeletor? Fool. Try this! <laughs> At last I won! The wheel spins! I... I can't stop it! <laughs> no one can stop it! It will spin throughout time, moving faster, growing larger, until in years to come, it will explode, destroying Castle Grayskull forever! Maybe I can't stop it, but I bet I can speed it up! No! Only one thing to do. Something Jupiter! What was that? 
that's what Skeletor had planned for Grayskull. <laughs> he just forgot to plan on He-Man. Welcome back, He-Man. You did well, all of you. What happened to Samara? I liked her. All I can say is that through your efforts, the Snake Clan and the Ape Clan will be friends again. And together, they'll build the world that is our Eternia. You have the thanks of Castle Grayskull, He-Man. And now I must make sure that Skeletor's Time Corridor is closed forever. Farewell. <laughs> Now that's what I call real magic. As we've just seen, Skeletor went back into the past to make evil things happen. In reality, no one can go back into the past. That's only make-believe. But we can try to learn from the past, from things that have happened to us, and try to apply them toward being better people today. Remember, it's today that counts. So make it the best day possible. Until next time, this is He-Man wishing you good health and good luck. We'll return after these messages. Hi there, time for Timer, your roving reporter. I'm talking to you from inside a fantastic factory, your digestive system. You know what we build here? You! Not out of wood or metal, but out of food. You see... You are what you eat from your head down to your feet. Things like meat and eggs and fish you need to build up muscle tissue. Uh-oh. Hello. Appetite control. More protein. We need energy. Playing tennis today, you know. Whoops. All these motors in your body need a lot of fuel to go on, like carbohydrates, fats and proteins, vitamins, and so on. What's left over forms the building blocks you need, indeed, to grow on. Yes, you are what you swallow, so that next time you feel hollow, don't just fill your face with any old kind of treat. This goes for every kid or six-foot athlete. All you really are is what you eat. It's Rad 2.0. Arms closing. The radio controls robot. He does pretty much whatever you want him to do. Arms opening. Which means you don't have to. Waist down. Arms closing. Waist up. He'll even do your dirty work. Bobby. Hey, we know how tough your life can be. Bobby. Did you take care of the dog and do the laundry? Oh, yeah. Rad 2.0 fabric is not included. From Toy Max. Man, I hope you guys are digging He-Man in the Master Universe still. Um, I, 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 li I love He-Man, but man, I'll tell you what, man. They didn't use a lot of the toys. I'm just saying, man, there could have been a lot. But I get it. Animation, expensive, whatever. But, you know, we never have fake horror in an episode of He-Man. Fake horror. Seriously. That would be the king of reusable animation. <laughs> but, I don't know. But, man, there's so many of them that never got really a chance in the cartoon. But I still love it. Don't care. So, we're going to keep it going. We're skipping out of the Filmation universe now. And uh, we're going over here to the Deke universe. And, uh, yeah, as a kid, I snickered every time. Not going to lie. So... We are going to do some real Ghostbusters. Um, man, oh, I forgot how much I love this cartoon. It was smart. J. Michael Straczynski worked on it. You know, it's got to be smart. Um, it didn't dumb down. I mean, yeah, yeah, you had Slimer. You had some goofiness to it. But man, it was, you know, it didn't, it didn't really talk down to kids. Like so many other things. It didn't act like, you know, it, it was a smart show. So, here you guys go. This is Real Ghostbusters, Episode 4, Slimer Come Home. Enjoy.
three nights in a row, guys. It has to be the same group. At least it gives us an excuse to keep Winston out of the station until the you-know-what's ready. Egon, I don't get it. Why would the poltergeist go after random targets? I thought they usually hang out in one place. Don't they get weaker the further they go? Usually, yes. But this is very strange. They shouldn't have the energy for roving attacks, unless they have some source. Left! <laughs> Say, Egon, uh, you think we could have a little more warning next time? Uh, like, not to get personal, of course, but... Right! <laughs> now, what were you saying, Peter? Never mind. Okay, where to now? Left. It's coming from there. They're quick. Fellas, I think I heard something. What was Peter? Something. Hey, guys. Hmm. Looks like the trash wants to take us out. Now remember, poltergeists can't actually hurt you. <laughs> but trash cans sure can. Run! No! Blast them! Okay, so I saw a Clint Eastwood movie last night and got carried away. Sue me. It's showtime, folks. Just give me some room. Ready. 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 <laughs> trouble. Very, very big trouble. Whoa! 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 Wait a minute. Didn't I see this in The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> Look on the bright side. It couldn't possibly get any worse. I just don't understand it. We shouldn't have lost, but we did. They were strong, but poltergeists are supposed to get weaker the farther they get from home. Unless they were drawing on some other source of energy. Or the big one was feeding on all the energy from the small ones. Exactly. Like hooking more and more batteries to the same line. With that sort of power, they could go anywhere they want. Well, the only place I want to go right now is home. We're taking a long way home or something. Seems like it's taking us forever. You think Janine's got everything set up by now? This will really make his night. Janine! Yo, Slimer! Hey, where's everybody? Surprise! Surprise! Happy Surprise! birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Bet you thought we forgot, didn't you? I don't believe it. You guys, I thought we were taking a long time. And there's more to come. I just want you to know that I'm having a wonderful time. Look, Winston, it's blueberry fudge cake. Your favorite. Wow. I... I really don't know what to say. Ow? Oh, that's a nice video. Cool, yummy cake. This is the happiest day of my... Yeah. Yeah. Slimer, no, 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 no. no. Slimer, how could you? Oops. Uh oh. 
No, it's okay. I'm on a diet anyway. Hang on a second. No, it's not okay. <laughs> we planned this party all week, Slimer. It means a lot to us, to Winston, and you had to mess it up. That's not going to make up for it. Let it go, Peter. What's done is done. Yeah. It's my party. After all, Slimer just can't help himself. Are you kidding? He helps himself to everything that isn't nailed down or on fire. But what use is he? Huh? First time I saw you, you slime me. You've been nothing but trouble since. So do us all a favor. Cut it out, okay? You were awfully hard on him, Peter. I think you hurt his feelings. Well, he has to learn. Besides, ghosts don't have feelings. No? I wonder. Where's the problem? Right here, Ray. Slimer's run away from home. What? what? If that's it, I'm going back to bed. Slimer wouldn't leave. He's got too good a deal going here. Oh, no, you don't think so? No one likes me. I'm always doing bad things. I try, but I can't help it. So it's better if I leave. Goodbye forever, Slimer. Can I see that? You can read this? I'm a secretary. I can read anything. Someone wanted him to go. Who? Oh, let me guess. This is all my fault, right? It doesn't matter whose fault it is. We've got to go after him. Uh, yeah, we're right behind you, Winston. We'll split up. That way we can cover the most area. Aren't you going to look for him? Who, me? Hey, I'm the guy he slimed, remember? Go after him? Ha! I think just robbed. Huh? He helped himself to everything that's not nailed down. that maybe, maybe you were going out to look for Slimer. Who, me? Heck no. I was just going uh, out for a walk. Yeah, that's it, a walk. In the rain? Hey, uh, sure thing. New York rain's good for you. Well, see you later. Uh, just one thing. If you should happen to find Slimer, tell him, tell him we miss him. Uh... Sure. Slimer! <laughs> 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 Slimer! 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 
You two find anything? Yeah, same here. Something up, Egon? Just thinking about those poltergeists we fought earlier. They're certainly looking for all the ghost energy they can find, which means any ghost loose right now may be a target. Slimer? Exactly. Let me get this straight. Every time a ghost joins them, their power increases. They draw on its energy and become more dangerous. But Slimer? If I'm right, then even one more ghost might make all the difference. They'd steal his energy, becoming unbeatable and terribly, terribly evil. Even Slimer. Got something here. We'd better split up if we're going to find Slimer before the poltergeist do. Agreed. If we don't, he'll become a part of their evil as it crosses the country. He'll be gone forever. What's wrong, my man? You lose something? Hey, maybe we can help you find it. What's it look like? I'm looking for a full torso ectoplasmic manifestation. Color green, no legs, spirit classification unknown. Hey, we had him, man. Why'd you let him go? Well, my dad told me never to mess with anybody weirder than I am. Oh, yeah. Why aren't you looking for Slimer? It's a new theory of mine. Ever notice how if you go looking for someone, you almost never find them? Well, I figure if I wait in one place, everybody I ever met in my entire life will come by sooner or later. Ray, I think you should know. That's the most ridiculous theory I have ever... Ray Stones, hello! That's Mrs. Milligan, my second grade teacher. Hi, Mrs. Milligan. Ray... I think one of us needs a nice, long vacation. Now you. Now, if I were Slimer, where would I go? Beats me. Poor guy. I'm almost ready to forgive him for all the times he slimed me. Almost. Huh? Slimer! There you go! I don't believe it! He did it to me again! Hello, fellas. Guess what? 
I found Slimer. Peter, out. Slimer's in there. How do you know? How else do you think this happened? Come on, Peter. I've seen you eat. This doesn't look good, guys. We're too late. It started. What started? The individual frequencies are merging. All the small ghosts in there are being absorbed into one big ectoplasmic mess. If Slam is in there, and he's already been absorbed, then we may never be able to separate him. Meaning that we'll have to zap, trap, and contain all of them, Slimer included. Kind of makes it a perfect day, doesn't it? <clears throat> <clears throat> Just a joke, fellas. Lighten up. Now let's go get him. This is it, guys. All right, freeze. Oh, boy. It's got Slimer. If Slimer's in there, we'll never get him out. I can barely read Slimer's frequency. He's getting weak. We're losing him. There's just one chance. Set your proton beams at 500,000 megahertz. Slimer's frequency. We'll try to yank him out. I just hope you know what you're doing, Egon. Because I sure don't. All right. Fire! <laughs> He's all right. Hey, can we cook or what? Now for Mr. Ugly himself. <laughs> That's what happens when you call names, Peter. I think we're in a lot of trouble here. You don't suppose that thing would listen to reason, do you? Doubtful, Peter. Very doubtful. <laughs> I want you to know, Egon, this isn't my idea of a night on the town. could overload at any second. I think we better get this thing in the store. It's fast. Before it blows. There's only one chance. What an awfully good idea, Winston. <coughs> oh. And I guess you can come too, Slimer. <coughs> Let's put this baby to bed. Uh-oh. Hey, piece of cake. Cake. Mm. And speaking of which, we want to see you upstairs now. Uh, 
to cry! <laughs> Welcome home! <laughs> Just our way of saying we missed you. And don't ever do that again. The party was Peter's idea. <laughs> Give me a break, okay? Hey, so I like parties. It's got nothing to do with pond scum over here. And I didn't miss you. Uh. <laughs> well, maybe just a little. <laughs> hey, enough talking. Let's eat. We got two parties to make up for, you know? <laughs> Yummy. What? <laughs> Don't worry, Slimer. Yeah, even scientists learn from their mistakes. Now let's eat. Oh, hey, speaking of learning, I taught Slimer a new trick. All right, Slimer. Go ahead. Show him your food. No. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, not, don't, don't do that. No. no. Oh, yeah. oh, that was disgusting. disgusting. Oh, Log start date tonight. They gave her back to me, Scotty. Aye, sir. It's time for the original. Spock, you haven't changed a bit. The first chapter in the adventures of the Starship Enterprise. You cannot hold full power on Fort Field. Systems overloading, Captain. Spock. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy. I offer my services as science officer. Take you beyond the galaxy. Warp speed now. Star Trek, the motion picture. Next. Everything's run together. There's no past, no future. Chased by demons, haunted by desire. You know, maybe I can't share it, but I can still feel it and want it. A normal, everyday life. Alone, vulnerable, John York is Werewolf Sunday. Hey, I hope you guys are still digging on the real Ghostbusters. I said, I'm a fan. I will love this cartoon till I die. Um, and the, the the cast. Holy crap, man. Yeah, Lorenzo Music as Peter Venkman. You had Frank Welker. Frank Megatron. Frank Freddie Jones. F <laughs> Weller. Well, Welker. As. Race Dance. And Arsenio freaking Hall as Winston Zedmore. Which is weird because, I mean, the real Winston Zedmore lost out to Arsenio Hall. Craziness. So, we're going to go over here. Since I brought you the first episode last week, we're going to bring you episode two this week. And we're going to bring you probably my favorite cartoon of all time. It is in the top three. It is G.I. Joe, Scooby-Doo, Thunder the Barbarian, Transformers. Yeah, I'm, I'm big. But G.I. Joe is legit one of my favorite things in the world. Um, I have a big G.I. Joe figure collection. I'm not, not massive. Not like my uh, friend of mine. He's got a G.I. Joe collection. Um, I have a ton of G.I. Joe. Um... I was friends with one of the artists on the G.I. Joe comic in the 2000s. Um, I grew up with G.I. Joe. It is ingrained in me. Um, my grandparents, when G.I. Joe dropped, they went and bought me Breaker. I can tell you which one, Breaker. Um, because my uncles grew up on G.I. Joe. My dad grew up on G.I. Joe. And when it came back, my grandparents, like, Yes, we were, you know, I, I fell in love with it. 
um, shortly after Breaker. It was Snake Eyes, and then it's been downhill ever since. Um, G.I. Joe is, like I said, one of my favorite things in the world. Um, not going to lie. Um, I love this show. And I've met a bunch of people who've worked on it I've, in the comics, the toys. Um, so I'll tell you some stories about more G.I. Joe later. But as you can see, boom, the new Super 7 Baroness. But this is G.I. Joe Episode 2, Slave of the Cobra Masters. Enjoy. Yo, Joe! He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe against Cobra and Destro, fighting to save the day. He never gives up, he's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is the code name for America's daring, highly trained special mission force. Its purpose, to defend human freedom against Cobra. Ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the he world. He never gives up. He'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Using the mass device, Destro and Cobra Commander steal a powerful satellite, kidnap Duke, and terrorize the world. Scarlet and the other Joes learn that the only way to stop Cobra is to build their own mass device. To fuel it, they must search the globe for three precious elements and get them before Cobra does, or all is lost. Duke battles for his life in Cobra's arena of sport as we begin our second episode, Slave of the Cobra Master. pieces of gold says you can't. How do you plan to stop me? By letting my unwilling gladiator fight his own battles. <laughs> it, it's too north. Fight Cobra, we must build another mass device. But as you know, mass is fueled by three very rare catalytic elements. To defeat Cobra, we must get our own supply of this fuel. Cobra's gonna be on the horn with demands in less than 24 hours, Dr. Vandermeer. Now, how long before you can have a mass device ready for us to use against them? A few days, perhaps a week. But without the three elements, it will be valueless. Well, then tell us where to find them, Doc, and we'll bring them in pronto. Very well. But it will not be easy. The first element we need is a radioactive crystal which can be found buried near the Arctic Circle. Not far from a glacial expanse known as the Sea of Ice.
That's enough! Commander, a message. Wait! This cannot be permitted! Oh, the world has refused to surrender to Cobra! People are volunteering to stand and fight against us to the bitter end! Worse, our spies report G.I. Joe has learned about the three catalytic elements and is going after them. The sport can wait! We must have a strategy meeting! I am Selina. Slip this between your headband and your forehead, and you will be able to interrupt the control waves. It will cause you agonizing pain, but you will be free to run. Why, why are you doing this? Shh, the guards approach. When you flee, make for the great cobra's mouth. I shall meet you there. What are you holding? I saw him pass you something. Search him. Ah, nothing. Save the water, slave. He won't be thirsty soon, or anything else but pulverized. <laughs> <laughs> Keep laughing, jerk. This is my ticket out of here. We got the coordinates cold, pretty lady. And I'm talking cold. How do you read it? Dr. Vandermeer was right, Snowjob. The crystal mine is ahead of us, at the edge of the forest. No tracks in the snow. I'd say we got here before Cobra. Then let's get those crystals and get out. I'm starting to identify with frozen food. <laughs> Major Blood. By the time we reach the mine, our enemies will have the crystals and be long gone. I wouldn't bet on it, Lieutenant. in there bothers Snake Eyes, Tripwire. And I know better than to doubt Snake Eyes' sixth sense, Scarlet. A little sweep and scan couldn't hurt. But stay back! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. All is in readiness, Cobra Commander. Only a show of force will convince the world we mean business. Begin! Citizens of the planet, evidently our first demonstration of Cobra power wasn't sufficient to convince you of my purpose. This time, there will be no room for doubt. Premier Ivan Valankov of the Soviet Union, I have you and your Red Square battalions in my view. Comrade, I hereby call upon you to order your entire military command to lay down its arms. You have ten seconds to comply. Your time is up. Now you and your nation will pay for your arrogant refusal to obey me. <laughs> The next. 
next demonstration of my power will not be so gentle. Therefore, hear this and obey. Leaders of all nations meet at noon tomorrow on Tanu Island. That is all. I was rather good, wasn't I? The mass device is not a toy for your amusement. These repeated demonstrations of its power have almost exhausted our supply of catalytic elements. The world doesn't know that. Now come, it's time to return to our sport. I must replenish the pods. That can wait. First I'll dispose of Duke. Then we can get on with our conquest of the world. <laughs> Reptilian Popinjay. I don't pick up any life form readings. There's some funny blips on my scope, but they could be from radioactivity. Then let's dig some crystals. Robot defenders! I knew this wasn't one of my better days. into the crystal vein. The radioactivity will fry us. The robots have to reprogram to deal with our new position. Transistors. We'll mop up while you go get the crystals. And hurry, we're running low on time. Let us end this fast. There's work to do. I'm enjoying the sport. Besides, I don't feel there's anything that can't wait. That shows what you know. It was I who developed the mass device. I who made you aware of its potential. You! Without my money and organization, you'd be out in the rain watching your face rust. Gold strip. Selena said it would... Interrupt control. I must concentrate. Concentrate! This bickering is senseless, Cobra Commander. We are allies. Now, may we? Of course. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Stop the prisoner! Identification, please. He must not leave alive! Hold it right there, hero! You are hurt. I'll be fine. But I've got to get out of here. 
The Viper Glider. It is the only way. Hurry. I'll have you all punished if Duke escapes. Strike, Cobra! Strike! I don't know how to thank you, Selina. There is no need. What'll happen to you? I know secret ways back to the slave pens. No one will know I've been involved in your escape. Now go! Something to remember me by. Until I come back to free you and your people. Any second now? There! Until we meet again! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Ready when you are, Snake Eyes. Take cover! Oh, oh I it. did it! Fresh snowy air. I never thought I'd smell it again. I... We got company. Cobra! Cobra! They can't get in. We can't get out. The failsafe activator, Major. An explosive charge was placed in the mine for an occasion just like this. a radioactive cloud. We could stay here and learn to glow in the dark, or we can go out there and maybe get cut to pieces. Snake Eyes! We'll try a breakout when he joins us. Come in, Snake Eyes. Acknowledge, Snake Eyes! Acknowledge! He's lowering a radioactive shield! Get out of there, Snake! There was no time for him to get out. He knew that when he brought it down to save us. <laughs> There's nothing we can do for him. And we can't get at the crystals either. Hey! Look at there! A way out! It must have opened automatically when Snake Eyes lowered the shield. Come on! We'll never forget you. For what you've done, Snake Eyes. We owe you our lives. For now, We've got to get out of this trap. Let's move out before Cobra comes in here after us. Ah! <laughs> 
there'll be a bonus for all of us. <laughs> His vital signs are weak, cover girl, but Duke's no ordinary man. Full emergency team, ready. As world leaders rendezvous to await the orders of the Cobra commander, this is the scene at Tanu Island in the Pacific. The American delegate to this reluctant conference is presidential appointee General Flagg. General, what is the government's position on this situation? Simply this. We will never surrender to Cobra, no matter what their threats may be. The position of my country is... What happened? They're gone, man. Spring's blank. Just like the Red Army. Boastful fools! Your rash statements of bravery are pointless. This is the fate of all who reject my supremacy! <laughs> the fate of your leaders will be yours if you continue to defy us. Surrender to the new Cobra Order or become our mindless slaves. The choice is yours. There's Duke. He's been hurt. What? Stalker. How did I get here? We were hoping you could tell us. You were with Cobra. And if you know how to get to Cobra headquarters, we could put an end to this nightmare fast. It's no use. I, I can't remember anything. Nothing except... except a face. A beautiful face. You gotta remember, man. Somehow, some way, you must. If you can, Cobra's one at all. <laughs> G.I. Joe will return after these messages. In our next episode, Cobra robots blast their way into the crystal mine, freeing the dangerously radioactive snake eyes, while the G.I. Joe team dives to the ocean floor in search of the precious elements needed to stop Cobra's reign of destruction. And Duke and the Baroness unexpectedly join forces in a terrifying struggle against the giant cube worms, all in the Worms of Death, the next exciting episode of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. as I do. Um, I am a sucker for the weirdest figure, weirdest toys too, man. Literally, okay, Snake Eyes, G I Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Baroness, Sci-Fi. Love that character. Severely underused. Loved Sci-Fi. Still to this day, I got like five or six Sci-Fi's. The same figure, not the not multiple different versions of them, like my Snake Eyes collection. I have like 30 different Snake Eyes, maybe? Somewhere in that ballpark. 
and uh, even have the elusive original straight arm Snake Eyes Commando that I've had since I was a wee kid. I've had that for 40 years? Since 82? 41 years? Jeez. That's one of the few things I've, I've always kept with my Snake Eyes. So, we're going to skip out. We're staying in the same universe. Because Hector Ramirez says so. And then we're going over here for Gem and Holograms. Yep, Gem, she's truly outrageous. Uh, I went and found a one with the original opening. So we're back to Gem, truly outrageous. Yeah, not Gem Girls. Gem, truly outrageous. You know, it's crazy that no one has released the Gem albums. I would go, I would totally buy a gem on vinyl in the Misfits. Well, they can't do Misfits, but you know, Jam presents Misfits or some shit like that. Um, I would, I would totally own them and it would be in my collection along with my Transformer soundtrack on vinyl. So, here you guys go. This is Gem and Holograms, episode 5 Battle of the Bands. Enjoy. Ooh, Malone. The best in the biz. To find out who Jem really is. Malone followed Jem in the holograms to the Starlight Drive. The hideout of Synergy, Jem's computer, capable of projecting sophisticated holograms. As soon as they left, Malone moved in. Intruder. Intruder. the ownership records for the Starlight Drive-In. I knew Eric Raymond was behind this, and he won't waste a minute getting the synergy. And neither will we. Show's over, Synergy. And guess who owns the Starlight Drive-In? I don't have time to play 20 questions. Emmett Benton. Jerrica's father? If you ask me, Jerrica Benton and this gem dame are the same person. Oh, that's impossible. I, I, I've seen them together. Well, there's something spooky about this gizmo. Hey, talk to me, I'm telling you. I'm sure it did. Whatever this gizmo is. Yeah, well, it's got something to do with the machine in that picture. Hmm. Then whatever it is, I want it. Well, you better hurry, because the last time I saw it, it was a blow on a couple of fuses. Synergy, what happened? <laughs> Don't worry, Jerrica. I had to do something when the intruder was here. It's only a hologram. And now we've got to get you out of here before Eric shows up. Can't you get this crate moving any faster? Okay, okay, okay. the next street. Hurry! I hear somebody coming! Get in! What about the gate? Crash it! They've gone inside! Hit it! Panda empty. 
do you know? This is the last time they make a fool out of me. Synergy should be safe here. Let's pray we've put her back together right. We'll know in a minute. Jerrica's waifs. How convenient. Uh, look, why don't you girls get ready for the concert? Just leave her with me. Sure. What do we care? Stormer. Oh, here it is, the big night, and I don't know what to wear. <laughs> Kimber, you look great already. We've got to look better than the misfits. This is a battle of the bands, not a fashion show. Right, our music is what counts tonight. Pick something soon or we'll go without you. Hello? Help me, Jerrica. He's got me trapped. Let her go. Let's get down to business, shall we? Jem and the holograms have got 30 minutes to get to Starlight Drive-In. And not a word to anyone else or Ashley. Pays the price. Show will be right back after these messages. And now back to Jim. We can't let him blackmail us like this. You realize it's a trap to keep us away from the concert. But what else can we do? I can't tell you what to do, but I'm going. Well, you're not going without me. Or me. Time to rock and roll, ladies. If you want to supervise the uh, stage... Hey, what's going on here? You go ahead. We need a little more time. I know you too well. There's something wrong. Rio, you'll have to trust me. Okay, but if you need me... <sighs> Rio, I'll see you later. We could use his help. I know, but Eric warned us not to tell anyone or else. Showtime, Synergy. Let's hit the road. Excitement is mounting here at the Music Bowl. In a few moments, the gates will open and thousands of fans will pack the stadium for this sold-out battle of the bands between the Misfits and Jem and the Holograms. The Misfits! 
Whoever wins, one thing is certain. Modern music will never be the same. What do you mean we gotta take care of her? I have an appointment to keep. If you want to win, you'll do as I say. I'll be back before you go on. Let me go! Let me go! Knock it off, you! In that trunk. It'll hold her until after the contest. No! Stop her! Cut her off! Soft. We've got to win this contest. Winning is everything that counts. You're either with us or against us. I'm sorry, Ashley. Farmer! Stormer! I'm... I'm with you. Let's go. Stormer! Stormer! Let me out! Ow! Jim, where have you... Oh, it's you. What's the matter, lover boy? Has Jim chickened out? She'll be here. Wanna bet? into a lion's den. We're gonna pull that lion's teeth. Where's Ashley? You'll get her back after the contest. You're the lowest of the low, Eric. Uh-oh. Run, Jim! Ugh! Run! Get her! Right! What's happening? 
happening? Jerica? Jerica, is something wrong? Jerica! Jerica! Jerica, where are you? Jerica will be right back after these messages. When you fail to appear at the Battle of the Bands, the Misfits will win by default, and I will gain total control of Starlight Music. but to award the contest to the Misfits. I'll need every second you can give me. Synergy, do you understand what to do? Yes, Jerrica. I understand. I am ready to protect the holograms. Showtime, Synergy. <laughs>
No matter what it takes, we're gonna get even. more exciting for me than Gem and the Holograms winning the contest. It's like coming home. Allow me. So much for Eric Raymond. Eric! That's right, Jerrica, darling. But why aren't you in jail? It's amazing what lawyers can do if you pay them enough. And what are you taking from my office? Personal possessions. Raymond! That's something personal to remember me by. I'll remember. I'll make something great of Starlight Music. Something my father would be proud of. He'd be proud already. Kenner Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Collection. Millennium Falcon that you put together. Batteries not included. Nice landing, Han Solo. Uh oh, come on, Chewbacca. Stormtroopers are coming. Action figures each sold separately. Got them on radar. I'll fire the laser cannon. There's even a hidden storage hatch. Ready for takeoff. Jump to light speed. We're gone. On to the Death Star. Millennium Falcon from Kenner Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Collection. Action figures each sold separately. Action. Now you can imagine all the power in the universe. The Masters of the Universe Collection. 23 pieces, each sold separately. There's He-Man and these heroic action figures. Skeletor and the Warriors of Evil. And four fighting creatures. Castle Grayskull, Point Dread and the Talon Fight. You put them together. And battle machines like the Attack Track. Batteries not included. What would you do with all the power in the universe? Oh. He-Man, Skeletor, and all other items from the Masters of the Universe Collection. Each sold separately. From Mattel. Look, folks! Yeah, I love that. Look, folks, you can win a choice of neat prizes. Free regular... Regular... Regularly. <laughs> All right, still one of my words today. Plus as much as 2 to $10 a week. And in 1973, 2 to $10 a week for a little kid was probably a lot. Because in like 1979, $5 a week was a lot to Paul. So, that would buy me a couple figures a week. You know? A couple Star Wars figures. Maybe I occasionally I'd save up and get a, a, a ship or something like that. But, yeah. So, then if I would have got a 2 to $10, I could have doubled down and bought more toys. <laughs> so, I hope you guys still dig Gem and the Holograms. I know I do. And is just a good cartoon, not a boy cartoon, not a girl cartoon, a good cartoon. Yeah, it's very melodramatic and stuff, but still, Eric, the most evil cartoon villain ever, because he's just a dude. He's not super powered. He's not an alien. He's not a monster. He's not a terrorist. He's just a dude. <laughs> And he out now just slaps freaking Jerrica in the face. Just palm. You're like, man, that's messed up. I was a little kid when I did that. Crazy. Evilest character. Eric from, from Gem and Holograms. Just saying. So, staying in this universe. Keeping it there. And we're going over to Transformers. Ah. <sighs> Love me some Transformers. Part one of my top five all-time cartoons. Um, as we said earlier, my kids grew up on it. I grew up on it. Vince grew. Up, Vince just now discovered it, so it is awesome that he is figuring out Transformers. Um, he doesn't mess with the toys though. He doesn't really 
That's not a thing he cares about. He's a Sonic Mario kid. He loves a Sonic and Mario. Um, always on the lookout for plushies he doesn't have, which sucks because the plushies he doesn't have are the ones inside the little claw machines that are sitting inside the Krogers in my store. Every time, I was like, dude, he's buried. You're never going to get him out of there. I've won two out of that stupid thing. I won a Mario and a Sonic, but not. But they keep putting different ones in. <laughs> so, I went way off topic on that there for a second. But Transformers, um, this is episode three, uh, more than meets the eye. Um, so, enjoy. Leads their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons, the Transformers, robots in disguise, the Transformers, more than meets the eye, the Transformers. In search of precious energy, the Autobots venture forth into outer space, but the evil Decepticons attack them. Four million years later, the Autobots and Decepticons are reactivated. The Autobots track the Decepticons to the crystal mines of Burma, but their dangerous mission backfires as we begin the final episode of The Transformers. Looks bad, Jazz. Ratchet, see what repairs are needed. Let's get him up on his wheels. Ready, lift. Careful. Easy. Easy. Good. Prime, can you hear me? Oh. oh. He's still generating. Roller. What? What happened to him? Down, but not out. Roller's one tough little Autobot. Prime, can you transform? I... I'll try. I... Uh, I don't know if I can do it. Uh, I've almost got it. Come on, Prime. You can do it. Try harder. You got it. You got it. Come on. Welcome back to the land of moving parts! That was some blast you took. The blast. Bumblebee and Sparkplug. They're still inside. How will we ever find them under all that rock? Only one way. Stand back. Start digging. I found them! Over here! Yes! I thought we'd heard it! Thanks to you two, the Decepticons are finished. Well, we were almost finished, too. <laughs> Wheeljack wasn't kidding when he said it would blow in 60 seconds. 59.99, to be exact. With the Decepticons buried under all that rock, we can resume our search for the resources we need. And we can return to Cybertron? Very soon, Mirage. Very soon. Leap and Lubric! can get out! We are indestructible! Power to the Decepticons! Forever! Energon ah! cubes still functional. Make them and follow me! Scramble! The Decepticons! They're escaping! them. They're... Save it, Ironhide. They're too fast for us in the air. Well, I'm tired of sucking their vapor trail. I'll stop them. Ironhide, come back. I'll get him. Blue Streak, no! Call it off, Ironhide. There's too many of them. They're out of reach. Stop yapping, Blue Streak. This is my fight. Make it our fight. Stand one! 
Look to Megatron! Request permission to teleport! Permission granted! Teleport and destroy! It's like fighting a shadow! You can still talk, old buddy. Where'd you get hit? Back in somewhere. Think my linkage is busted. I'll check it. Get him inside. You gave us all a pretty good scare. It's been worse. I remember the time on Cybertron. Save the war stories, hotshot. Just remember there's a thin line between being a hero and being a memory. <laughs> Maybe Ironhide's ready for a nice, cushy office job. Hey, no way. Soon as Ratchet tightens a few bolts, I'll be right back in action. We'll see. Let's get out of here. Optimus Prime cares a lot for his fellow robots, and he doesn't want anything to happen to them. I think he'd make a neat president. <laughs> Ah, uh -uh, Ravage, this key's not for you. <laughs> Don't think he likes being a prisoner. Can't say I blame him. You know, I'm surprised the Decepticons haven't tried to rescue him. I'm not. They don't care about anyone, not even their own. Hey, Ravage, watch this. <laughs> Here's your friend Megatron to keep you company. <laughs> Hound, when we get back to Cybertron, will you make me a big house with a four-car garage? <laughs> Holograms look so real, nobody will know the difference. Mirage, you just gave me a great idea. A hologram? That's right, Prime, but I mean a big one. What did you have in mind? A gigantic illusion that'll trick the Decepticons into coming to us on our terms. It might just work. What's the hologram of? I've got an idea. I just saw Prime. He told me Teletran 1's located a secret supply of rocket fuel. Where? Not too far from here, about 140 kilometers due west. Then maybe we can go back to Cybertron? Why, there's enough rocket fuel at that base to make four trips to Cybertron. Come on, let's tell Ironhide. Make him feel better. But what about Ramage? Don't worry about him. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> What happened? Ravage. He escaped. Perfect. The rocket base is 140 kilometers due west of the Autobot camp. Excellent, Ravage! Excellent! That rocket fuel is the last resource we need to defeat the Autobots and control Cybertron! Right on schedule, aren't we? No thanks to you, Starscream. I've made my contribution! You've also made clear your desire to replace me as leader of the Decepticons. Mistake number one. It's time for a change, Megatron. It's time for action, not words. I am the leader of the future! You couldn't lead androids to a picnic. How can you pretend to lead the Decepticons? Megatron! It's... it's empty! 
You failed to dispose of me when you had the chance, Starscream. Mistake number two. Now it's my turn. Please, don't fire. I, I, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. Please, don't shoot. <laughs> Megatron! Megatron! We attack the rocket base at sunrise! The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Attack! Hold it! Stop fighting! What in the universe is going on here? Scrap! Springs! Junk! We've been had. That's right, Prime. I was on to your little scheme from the start. Did you really think you could fool me by allowing Ravage to escape? Did you? Go on, Megatron. You're in the driver's seat. While you and the other Autobots have been fighting a bunch of loose screws, the real Decepticons have been at the real rocket site. You've lost, Prime. The Decepticons have won. <laughs> The race isn't over yet, Megatron. Oh, it's over, Prime. You just don't know it. <laughs> Unidentified aircraft approaching, sir. A lot of them. This is Cape Carlson Control Tower. Identify yourselves. Identify. Over. They're moving fast, Captain. Repeat. Cape Carlson to aircraft. Give us an ID and a flight mission. That's an order. Look, they're coming down. Sound the alarm! <laughs> What's happening down there? Our weapons are totally ineffective. There's nothing we can... Excellent! Excellent! Prepare the Energon cubes! Course back to Cybertron charted. Space cruiser fueled and ready for departure. What are your orders, Megatron? Prepare! We have come to a moment of truth. The Decepticons are in position to return to Cybertron. We have no choice but to attack them directly. But this battle will be most dangerous. So I ask for volunteers. Jazz? Volunteers, step forward. Autobots, transform. <laughs> Start your engines! Ready, Prime! Let's roll! So close, Soundwave! Space Cruiser, ready for boarding. So very, very close to conquest. Prime to Autobots. Encircle the base. Decepticons, it is time to return to Cybertron and conquer the Autobots forever!
Legends, transform! Bumble, laser beak, ravage, prepare for battle, operation, warfare, eject, eject, eject! I owe you one from Sherman Dam, Rumble! You couldn't swim! What makes you think you can fight? Watch me! Just you and me now, Megatron. Then you better get some help, Prime. Oh, no. I've been waiting for this chance. <laughs> Only one of us is going back, Megatron. It won't be you, Prime. Hey, who did that? You're finished, Megatron. Call it off. Call it off! Never time! You and every last Autobot would be destroyed! <laughs> to the Space Cruiser! Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. It's over, Prime. We've lost. No, not yet. Sideswipe. Give me your rocket pack. My rocket pack? Now! Uh, yeah. Right. This is crazy, Prime. You'll never catch it. I'll be back, Jazz. It's done! We've seen the last of the Autobots and Optimus Prime! Not yet, Megatron. Prime is right behind us. That's impossible. Open the artillery hatch. We're going home! Our home! It's Prime! He's been hit! He's out of control! Don't move, Prime! We'll take care of you! Uh, I'm fine. I'm all right. Let Ratchet check you out. I said I'm fine! You did all anyone could do, Prime. I don't know. Maybe. Where's Mirage? That's strange. I saw him before, during the fight. He's gone now. At last, total victory is within my grasp. Not yours, Megatron. Mine! <laughs> I see that you have learned nothing, Starscream. Wrong! I've learned a great deal. I won't miss this time. Beware, Starscream. If you dispose of me, there will always be someone waiting to dispose of you. Let them try. I've waited for this moment a long time, Megatron. And my time is now! Autobot Invader. Autobot Invader. Losing power. Do something! 
Regain sound wave! Regain control! Control impossible. Prepare for impact. We're gonna crash! We'll be destroyed! No! You can't let us crash sound wave! Do something! Do something! I'll say hello to to Prime for you, Megatron! Happy landing! Stop it! They're going to crash! The Decepticons are gone. Our path is clear now. They were on their way to Cybertron. Must have been a mechanical failure. I don't think it was a mechanical failure, Jazz. Look. Mirage! You did it! You stopped the Decepticons! We knew you were anxious to get back to Cybertron, but at least you could have waited for us. Sorry, Prime. The ship was full. <laughs> well done, Mirage. Well, let's get back to the base. We have a ship of our own to repair. Can I go back to Cybertron with you? Maybe you better ask your father. Can I, Dad? Only if I can go with you. All right, let's go home. Autobots, transform! <laughs> Because the Autobots stopped the Decepticons from stealing Earth's resources, the governments of the world have agreed to give Optimus Prime the energy he needs to revitalize Cybertron. It's probably the first time all the governments ever agreed on anything. Well, that's it from Earth. Next stop, Cybertron. Ready, Spike? It's almost time to blast off. I'll be right there, Prime. One more thing. I sure am glad we don't have to worry about Megatron and all those Decepticons anymore. The Transformers will return after these messages. that looks so golden. Holds up to 40 Star Wars action figures, like new Squidhead and Emperor's Royal Guard, each sold separately. And besides the new C-3PO collector's case, there's a new Chewbacca bandolier strap. Fits over your shoulder for play and holds 10 action figures securely, like new Princess Leia Organic and Reese, each sold separately. It even has pouches. New C-3PO collector's case, Chewbacca bandolier strap, and action figures, each sold separately from Kenner's Star Wars Return of the... And you control their every move. Behold, I pour. Copter. Turbo. And side kill. The Gobot invasion has begun. My robot, my Gobot. Gobot. Alright, man. So. I hope you guys still digging Transformers. I will always dig Transformers. Um, I became fascinated with finding the... Because when I found out that Transformers did not end in Japan, I freaked out as a kid. And now as an adult, I have all of them. And they're all pretty damn good. Um, they get a little weird because they are Japanese. But man, go, go find it. Go find Master Force, God... Uh, uh, Victory and God Force. Yeah. Um, we got them like Power Masters and stuff over here. Uh, completely different over in Japan. 
they actually had a cartoon for those. Multiple, multiple, three more seasons that we did not get in America. And I like them. And I tell you what, that is messed up when you're, you know, because what, Transformers was 88? And yes, I was a freshman in high school around that time, you know. Um, you know, discovering the girls and the whatnot and getting starting to get in trouble. I still love my cartoons and my toys and comics. Um, but yeah, I, all of a sudden, man, I, I was in high school and I had a kid from Japan that I hung out with and they were telling me about Transformers. And I'm like, what? They're like, we didn't get the movie over here either, which you guys got. I aired Scrambled City. Um, they did not get the movie. They got Scrambled City. Um, and I'm like, what? What? What, what? 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 And then it took me till I was an adult, and I started finding bootlegs on VHS tapes. Uh, and now uh, Shout Factory has them legally. So, But we're going to talk about some vinyl today. Um, and I want to talk about this one here. It is Josie Pace. Uh, this is probably not somebody you've heard of. Uh, I had not heard of her before last Saturday. I uh, went up to uh, Hamtramck in near Detroit in Michigan. I uh, went up for a concert from the band Nightclub and Josie opened. Um, Josie, it's funny because I looked at my, I looked at the, 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 the wife, the, uh, what did somebody say? The Admiral. Yes, um, uh, Tina is the admiral uh, because she gets to tell me what to do. Uh, I was like, man, I was like, Josie looks like she should be fighting against Gemini holograms. <laughs> or she should be hanging out with Wendy Williams. Um, really cool sound. Um, it's synthy, pop, and synthwave, industrial, um, man, techno, um, which. I'm a, uh, you know, everybody knows I'm a metal guy. Man, sometimes I got to mix up. I've been really mixing it up with the synth wave and the synth, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I'm, I, I dug this. Um, I got a sign. It comes with liner notes. And uh, the center is a picture. And it is your basic thick black. Well, I don't know what um, Nice. Uh, actually, really cool person. Uh, got to talk to her for a little bit. Hopefully, I'll have her on the uh, group therapy show before too long. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Uh, she's on tour, and it's a little hard, but uh, we talked, so we'll go from there. All right. So I'm hoping I put a cartoon past the credits, so stay tuned. Watch it. You know, you guys should be ready for that now. I should be like the Marvel of Saturday morning cartoon shows. I always put a bonus at the end if I can. Uh, yes, sometimes you can't put a bonus in there. I'm looking at you, uh, in game. So, but as always, you can catch me on Group Therapy TV, uh, at the Group Therapy TV podcast, sorry, those itches, every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time with interviews from people with all backgrounds in horror, comics, uh, writing, directing, um, whatever I find fascinating, I'll do an interview with them, uh, I've got a ton of great interviews coming up. We are booked up until July. So, you know, it's going to be fun. Uh, you're going to have some cool people. And then hopefully, yet again, hopefully I get the studio. And maybe if I do this right, build a set, um, I can actually have people on set with interviews. That's a project I'm working on. We're going to keep you guys in front of what, what what's on that, that, that front. So every Sci Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sci Fridays, with your favorite in sci-fi from years gone by. And you're watching it right now, every Saturday morning. The original, the behemoth, the monster that is Saturday morning serials. Um, your favorite show and mine. Uh, <laughs> I love doing this show for you guys, I really do. Um, I have a blast doing it sometimes. I mean, I find, I've been finding stuff I forgot. Um, being able to air episodes that I never thought I'd be able to air. And uh, for those who've asked, um, completely 100% demonetized. Um, that's how I can get away with airing this stuff. Um, have I got copy strike strikes? I got one for ALF, I think. Um, 
I just get, you know, they're like, you can't be monetized. The people will make, you know, everybody makes money off my show except for me. That's why there's commercials in there because I wouldn't put commercials in there. But people who have the rights to the stuff can. So I, fortunately, that is outside of my control when I first air it. Just letting you guys know. So if you see it, it's got ads in it and whatnot. Uh, some of them are unskippable. Um, not me. That is, uh, that's the people who actually have the rights to these shows. I just put them together for you guys. So. <sighs> All right. And if you hang out, if you're around the, the uh, Pickle, Ohio area tomorrow, 10 to 4, Pickle Comic Con, uh, June 4th. And speaking of June, uh, the captain's birthday is rapidly approaching. Uh, the captain will be 49 years. I have made 49 rotations around the sun, and uh, I'm still here. Uh, let's see if we can make it to 50. Um, <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm doing pretty good now. So, I want to do a shout out to all you guys. Um, yeah, uh, I try to do this every week. I, I mean, the big fans, the ones that are here every Saturday. Um, you know, that, I, can't, I can't just go, oh, just the Patreons get the, the shout out. Man, you guys are awesome. You're freaking watching me every week. So I want to do shout outs, man. Maria, Black Phoenix, Johnny, Lone Swordsman, Safer, Newfie, um, God dang, Warren, uh, Scott, Paulette, Jason. Um, geez, uh, I'm sitting here going through my list here. I got it right. Retro, Tarek, uh, WMD. Um, the guys at Way Out Toys, uh, the guys from Chad and the Bunny, um, just everybody who watches this stuff, everybody who's here week after week after week, um, winner, um, geez, you guys, you guys are all so cool. You're here. You're 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 hanging out with me. Uh, you're hanging out with each other. Um, you guys are a blast. To, even if I can, don't talk, I'm watching. Uh, it sounded creepy. Um, but, man, you guys, I just love watching you guys talk sometimes, man. It's awesome, the conversations you guys get into. Um, I do. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate each and every one of my fans. I do. Because um, if not, as I would have, I would still be doing this if I had 100 people, um, just for my sake. Um, but now I'm doing it for your guys'. Um, so I'm, I'm having fun doing it. And I have no plans on stopping. Uh, for those who ask me, um, I guess theoretically I can run out of cartoons at a certain point. Um, but if not, well, I'll just do what we used to love doing when we were kids. I'll rearrange the episodes and do reruns. So you, this show will never end as long as I can keep it going. Until they finally take me down, I will be here. So, I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, man, because we've been doing this for 110 episodes. So... And it's been a hell of a run. So I want you guys to all take care. I will see you all there. Captain out. Bye. This Saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an American broadcast channel. The last channel still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. Cartoons were the dominant morning program from the 1960s to the 1980s. Yes, that's right. The Toxic Crusaders work for the environment. That's right. They're good cartoons and they, they're environmental. Oh, greetings from Tromaville, kiddies. I'm your Uncle Lloydy, and welcome to the lovingly recreated DVD of the original TV show, The Toxic Crusaders. Yes, you know, these cartoons were created long before you were born before your mommy and daddy found you under a cabbage leaf. Yes, back in the 80s, the Toxic Crusaders were on their way to becoming a huge success like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you know what syndication means? Yes, this cartoon show should have gone into syndication and I would have become a very rich man. 
taxi was well on his way to becoming a household word, and we were going to have all this great merchandise to shill. And then the evil men from the big corporations came, and they took taxi away. Can you say devil-worshipping international media conglomerate? Yes, children, due to a conspiracy, taxi was taken off the air. But luckily, 13 half hours are beautifully preserved here in the happiest land of Tromaville. And you can watch them on this beautiful, beautiful DVD. Can you say independent company? That's right, independent company, because due to those very bad men, soon Uncle Lloydy will have no work and there will be no independent companies left. And Uncle Lloydy will be coming to you asking for a job. So please help Uncle Lloydy and watch the beautifully preserved DVD of The Toxic Crusader. And don't forget to watch some of those great Christmas cartoons that you'll also find here. Well, kids, it's time for Uncle Lloydy to go and cash his welfare check. Bye, kids. Bye. during an acid rainstorm, it's a horrible way to go. I love this town. Do you know why I love this town? Because you own it. Because it's the most polluted city in the world. And I, Dr. Killamoff, made it that way. Behold my evil genius. If you love your puppy, give him wolf dog food. The dog food that makes your puppy woof all over the place. I gotta get another job. This guy's a loser. I have to get this stupid thing! Ah, that's more like it. Look, I know you're an evil genius, Doc. What I don't know is where you want me to dump this Chrysolium 90. Ah, yes, Chrysolium. The deadliest toxic waste known to man. Dump it in the last unpolluted city in New Jersey. Tromaville. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Doc. What if some complete and hopeless nerd falls into the gasoleum and transforms into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength? Don't be ridiculous! A complete and hopeless nerd. Oh, I wish I wasn't a complete and hopeless nerd. Maybe then I'd have a girlfriend who loves me for who I am. Or at least confuses me with someone else. Hey, Bimbet, look at Melvin Junko. What a complete and hopeless nerd. Yeah, dog me with a rake. Melvin's a real nuclear pee-yooker. <laughs> How about if we have some fun with old Melvin and show everybody what a bogus geek he is? <laughs> That's a deaf idea, Bonehead. What's the plan? Sorry. You think he's stupid enough to fall for it? Go! 
Never mind. Yeah, I'll catch you later, babe. Hi, Melvin. You look really, really cute today. I do? Oh, yeah. In fact, I think it's time I dumped scuzzy old bonehead and started dating a really cute guy like you. You do? Would I lie? So, what are you doing tonight, huh? Well, at 7 o'clock, I practice burping. At 8, I wax my chicken. Then from 9 to 10, I like to smell my armpits. <laughs> How about if you meet me at the pool after the club closes and we get to know each other better? Know what I mean? No, but I'll be there. Great. Oh, would you also do me one big favor? You want to hear me burp? No. I want you to wear a special outfit on our day tonight. A tutu? Oh, gee, I don't know. Please, Melvy. It would mean so much to little Bim Bed if big, handsome Melvy Welby wore a cute widow tutu. <laughs> okay, if it means so much to you. <laughs> you sure you don't want to hear me burp? What a moron. Oh boy, this is my lucky day. I got a girlfriend. Yippee! <laughs> Sorry. Pink isn't really my color. I hope my mop doesn't clash. <laughs> Been bad. I'm ready. Been bad. Just have the strangest feeling I made a mistake sending that Rosolium to Trommelville. A complete and hopeless nerd? Nah. <laughs> Producer. Ah! Oh no! I'm changing again! I'm changing into a... A hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength! Ah! Uh, what? Oh, I got a big problem. Mom, it's me, Melvin! Melvin, my son! Oi. Oh. oh, what am I gonna do? Now that I'm a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength, where will I even live? Try the toxic waste dump. Thanks, Mom. I knew I could count on you. My new home. Oh, well, I guess it isn't so bad. Look at the bright side. How many people have a home that glows in the dark? <laughs> Well, hi, little fella. Why, you're a cute little blob. Let's see, what'll I call you? I know. How about Blobby? <laughs> well, Blobby, here's where I will live my life, all alone, with no one to love or care for me but you. Hey, what's that beautiful sound? something we want. Want to guess what it is? <laughs> Gee, do I win anything if I guess right? I really could use a microwave or maybe a waffle iron. I'd love a waffle iron. Oh, I know what I need. How about a socket wrench? You, you accordion, Dumbo. Give it now. Hey, this is weird. Something bad is happening nearby. I can feel it in my body. Somebody help me, please. Let's go. 
Gallimaya accordion. Now I'm sure somebody's hurting an accordion. Help! Hey, you punks, leave that girl alone. Oh, look, fellas, it's Melvin the Mop Boy. Your days of picking on nerds and accordion players are over, Bonehead. Let's get him. <laughs> this will teach you to mess with a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. <laughs> What's happening to me? I better get out of here! Feel lucky, punk? Not really, no. Are you okay? Fine, thanks to you. I did lose my contact lenses, so I can't see too good. Gosh, you're very handsome. Boy, this really is my lucky day. Yvonne. Gee, that's a pretty name. Thanks. It means pretty girl who walks in sunlight or big rusty cookie scooper. I forget which. So what did I call you? Well, I used to be called Melvin. But now that I've had a small accident with toxic chemicals, I think I need a new name. <gasps> how about if I call you Chemicals or Mr. Chemicals or Bucky Dent? Or how about... Toxie. That's it. You can call me Toxie. Uh-oh. I'm getting that weird feeling again. Something evil is happening, and it's happening real close. Help! Bad guys are gonna destroy our orphanage so they can build a poisonous chemical plant! Hmm, where could that evil be, huh? Hey, bad guys are trying to destroy that orphanage. That's not right. And my mop is alive. I bet that happened when it fell into the toxic chemicals with me. Okay, mop. Let's you and me clean up this mess. Have no fear, Toxie's here. Let go of her, you creep! Oh, thank you, Toxie. You're welcome, sweetheart. Now please step aside. A battle against evil is no place for a little girl. I'm having a ball! Hey, you shot my tutu! Now I'm really mad! Excuse me, but I need this vehicle to fight evil. Can you tell our home viewers what just happened here? I'm not sure, but I think my new boyfriend talks to his mop. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what happened. My son, Melvin Junko, who is now a hideously deformed creature with superhuman size and strength, saved those poor orphans from being thrown out of their home. We understand your name is Melvin Junko. Not anymore. From now on, my name is Toxie, and I'm a crusader against pollution, crime, and other stuff. So, I guess we could call you the... Toxic Crusader. Hey, yeah, I like that. The Toxic Crusader. Neat. No! How can this be happening? I told you so. What did you say? Nothing. Must be stopped. This, this Toxic Crusader must be eradicated. All my plans to pollute the world will be destroyed. Let me take care of the toxic crusader. Why should I give you the pleasure of killing him? Because he did this to me! All right, then. Do away with him and you will be well rewarded. No sweat. You can say goodbye to the toxic crusader. Goodbye! <laughs> I'm a hero, I'm feeling warm and snuggly. 
got a girlfriend, although I'm awful ugly. I'm a hero, I'm feeling warm and snuggly. I'm a hero. <laughs> What's the matter, little girl? <laughs> Coxie, my kitty cat stuck in the tree. Aw, don't cry. I'll get your kitty down. Mop, do your stuff. <laughs> Here you go, honey. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks, Coxie. You're the best. I'm a hero. I'm fit. Hey, what happened to the happy music? Oh, well. Okay, Toxic Crusader, get ready to become the Crushed Crusader. Uh-oh, I got that old feeling. Oh, no, look out, little girl. Look out! Are you okay, Toxie? Actually, I'm feeling a little run down. He's moving in for the kill. This is the end of the Toxic Crusader. I don't know, Dr. Killamoff. What if old Toxie jumps out of the way and defeats Bonehead with his super-powered mop? Don't be ridiculous! Are you ready, mop? by the Toxic Crusader's cursed mop! I told you so. What did you say? Nothing. I will have to put an end to this Toxic Crusader myself. Psycho, prepare my radiation rangers for battle while I prepare a special weapon just in case. He still might beat us if he's helped by other hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength. Psycho! I grow weary of your ridiculous ideas! Sorry, bad guys are so stupid. Yvonne, it's me, Toxie. Oh, Toxie, I missed you so. <laughs> Honey, where are you? I'm right here, Yvonne. Oh, goody, I have a surprise for you. I got new glasses so I can finally see your gorgeous face. <gasps> Yvonne, no! Oh, I should have known this would happen. How could a beautiful, intelligent girl like Yvonne ever fall for a hideously deformed creature such as myself? But I did fall for you, Toxie. Huh? But the minute you saw how ugly I am, you screamed. You're not ugly. You're very handsome. It's your toy that made me scream. Now that's ugly. I mean, more than ugly. It's gross. Okay, <laughs> so she's just beautiful. Can I help you? Say your prayers, Toxic Crusader! Why? Am I going to bed now? No, you are going to die for standing in the way of my plans to pollute Tromaville! But why do you want to pollute Tromaville? What good does it do anybody to poison the environment? I've always wondered that myself. It may be poison to humans, but not to the people of my planet, Smogula! <laughs> oh, man! I'm working for a cockroach? For the Smogulans to take over this planet, the air and water must be first poisoned to our liking. But if you poison our planet, as if we can't do it ourselves, then all human and animal life will die. What's your point? Oh, I'm definitely in the presence of some big time evil. My point is this, Bughead. This is my planet even though I don't look like I'm from it. And this is my town, which means it's my job to keep it safe, beautiful, and free from pollution. Then prepare to die, Toxic Crusader! Apocalypse! No! Excuse me, but uh, me and my friend are looking for a hideously deformed creature named Toxie. Have you seen him? He's up there. Oh, yeah, that's him. Tonight! Thank you. You fools, get him! I hate this part. 
It's cleanup time! Oh, sorry. Hey, excuse me. My name's Nozone. This is my friend, Major Disaster. We're both hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength. Really? Me too! Yeah, we know. We saw you on TV and wanted to come join you. Well, I have to warn you, it's a tough job. There's no general plan, and we don't get any piece of the merchandising. Oh, that's okay. We just want to fight bad guys. Great, you're hired. What's Major Disaster doing? Uh, he has the power to control plants. It takes him a few seconds to get going, though. Hey, hey. what's go. going on? Let's go. Let go. Let go. Hey. Hey, that's a cool superpower. Release Pluto. Destroy the toxic crusader and his prey. Uh, look. It's some kind of living oil slick. Mom, come back. Mom hates a mess. Oh no! That thing ate my mom! What, what do we do now? I've got an idea. Follow me. Kitty litter? What are we doing with kitty litter? Toxie, we're not fighting Heathcliff. Trust me, just empty the kitty litter onto the ground. Now, Nozone, aim your schnozola at that thing and use your sneeze power. You got it, buddy. Uh, 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 uh. Slick. Oh, Mop, are you okay? This can't be happening! If it weren't for those other two hideously deformed creatures helping the Toxic Crusader, I would have defeated him! I told you so. Ah! You, you saved Tromaville. Of course he saved Tromaville. He's my son. He's a hero. I'm no hero, Mom. I'm just doing my part to keep Tromaville beautiful, safe, and free from pollution. Gee, what an amazing coincidence. All three of us were turned into hideously deformed creatures with superhuman size and strength by accident. That's right. I was a soldier in the army when I fell into a radioactive swamp. And I was a pilot when I flew through a hole in the ozone and crashed my plane into a silo of radioactive pepper. Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. Well, lucky for us, we were all hideously deformed. Because now we're the Toxic Crusaders! Sounds like a good name for a TV show. I brought some dinner for you boys. I made your favorite burgers. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? I wrote a new song about my brave, handsome boyfriend and his two new buddies. Listen! Hideously deformed, superhumanly strong. They're the toxic crusaders, and they fight us against wrong. A one, a two, a three. We're, We're the, the toxic, toxic crusaders. We're the toxic crusaders. We're the toxic crusaders. Oh, oh, that we're pretty sure of. Uh, we're the toxic crusaders. We're the toxic crusaders. Oh, that we're pretty sure of.